over with a final handshake. The Steelers, as everybody has known, have done this year what the Colts did a year ago, just beat everybody right on through and have allowed only, you know, 28 points, winning nine straight ball games. And that emotion has carried them into what they face this afternoon, battling the Baltimore Colts. And emotion is one of the more important factors any team can bring to any football game. We're all ready to go. Linhart moving on the football, swings the leg, he hits it good. A fine Linhart kickoff, pulled back to the two-yard line. He is straight ahead over the 10, the 15. Still on his feet. Whoop, pops up, fumble, big pile up at the 22. A big pile up at the 22-yard line, and it looks as though the Steelers covered the football. They did. Poe was really racked. He was poleaxed. And Fuqua covered his fumble. It is a Steeler ball, first down at the 22. You say that he didn't take a shot? Yeah, he, he really did. I think Jimmy Kennedy nailed him. And Fuqua recovered it. They were lucky. He won't want to play anymore today. <laughs> Uh, Vince Bagley, we're very happy to have with us Arthur Donovan, and we've got to try to keep Arthur as close to that mic as we can so we can be sure and hear the Donovan comments this afternoon. First down for the Steelers at their own 22-yard line. Uh, closer, let's call it the 23 as we get things started, and they're waiting for Poe to leave field. He is still not feeling too good. Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris will be the running backs, and Lewis comes wide to the left side, and going far to the other side is... Uh, Lynn Swan, number 88, is far right, and Lewis is a uh, wide left in a standard pro set. The turn, the give goes to Harris off the left side. Nowhere as he gets stuck and stuck pretty good by, it looked like Stan White, first of all, and Darrell Lewis, he managed to carry to the 25. Second down, eight Steelers at their own 25. He lunged. He did the, uh, the old Lydell Mitchell lunge, though, after they hit him. Most of the good running backs, Vince, all fall the same way. They fall toward that line of scrimmage or toward that goal line. That's that second up to Chuck. That's what does it. Lewis wide to the left, Swan wide to the right. Now a stretch off, splits the backfield. No man directly behind the talented Steeler quarterback. A handoff to Blyer, a sweep of his right hand. Caught from behind, and down he goes to his own backfield. Jim Chayunski with a quick reaction, caught him from behind, and dropped him at about the 24-yard line. Chayunski just followed the pulling guard, and there was nobody there to pick him up. And he come in there free and makes a great play. Which brings up third down, a nine at the 26-yard line. Brian Salter comes in. Jim Chayunsky drops out. Colts now four down linemen, two linebackers, five deep defenders on a passing down. Third and nine, Pittsburgh at their own 24-yard line. Same offensive set for now. They got another number in there. Looks like Stallworth is in the ball game. Set out wide to the left side of the set. Waiting for the takeaway. Bradshaw's back to pass. A deep drop. Sets. Has time. Firing the bomb. All alone. Frank Lewis. He's got it at the 20. And Lewis is going to the 10 to the 5. He scores. There you are. You give a team that kind of uh, time to throw the ball, they're going to kill you. There's a thing where you could, uh, the, the ball game turns around. They fumble the opening kickoff. It came loose. They recovered it. And you, three plays later, they have a score. You'll see the Colts got a game going on, Vince. Yeah. And actually, they're going the wrong way. The straightest distance between two lines is straight. And they got a game, and they get picked up, and that's it. 76 yards. And Baltimore, which supposed to have had the bomb, and certainly has it. Pittsburgh, however, uh, ironically scores on the bomb the first time they throw the ball. There was just no contest. Lewis completely outraced the Colt defenders. He had as much as four and five steps on the only man near him, Jackie Wallace. The Bradshaw pass right on the money. They lead six to nothing. Jarella now ready to make it seven to nothing if he can do so. Waiting for the staff on the spot. There it is. High snap. Spot is okay. Kick is up in the air, and he missed it. He missed the point after touchdown. Jarella blew a point after touchdown, and it is now Baltimore and the Steelers in a six to nothing ball game. We have to change the notebook. The Steelers lead it six to nothing, and that old automatic point after touchdown is not so automatic this year. That's a very often happens with those soccer kickers. He pulled it left, and uh, it was wide, no good. So maybe it'll mean something later on. The Colts stuck early, though. Uh, have to come back right It's away. the fourth time this year Jarella has missed a point after touchdown, and it is six to nothing, and that could be a heck of a big point in any kind of a ball game as important as this, but that deep bomb from Bradshaw to Lewis has got to give the Colts secondary a little something to think about, as in the very first offensive series, they go 76 yards, Bradshaw to Lewis, and lead it six to nothing. Colt defensive unit, as I look at them down on the sideline, are still stamping around and very, very upset over what took place. 
Jarella will kick it off down on the goal line. Howard Stevens of the Colts waiting for it. Jarella moves, hits it. He squibs it along, bouncing it along. It's going to be picked up by no one, but it's going to go out of bounds, and they'll kick it over again. Well, Ron Lee was around, and Bruce Laird was around the football, but nobody bothered to pick it up. It went out of bounds at about the 26-yard line, and therefore the Steelers go back and do it again. I believe this guy, Jarella, was a soccer player. He don't look like he's a kicker. <laughs> Well, then he's been a great one, but if he hurt, and uh, maybe his hurt stayed with him. I, I don't understand why they didn't pick it up. Dunny, why wouldn't they have picked up try to get it out to the 35 or so? Well, well evidently they figured he can't kick the ball that deep, uh, Vince, and uh, they'll take the five-yard penalty and let him try to do his thing again. And, you know, on this, the extra point that he missed, it was a high snap from center. Yeah. And that could have been part of what it. happened. Right. All you need is that little bit of a fraction of a second to set the timing off. And, uh, right. and uh, Jarella missed the point after. Now from the 30-yard line, Jarella will kick it off again. We'll talk a little bit more about the Jarella injury on a kicker. It's a groin pull, and it's a very bothersome thing as he swings a leg. Kicking off a lot more difficult than kicking, uh, you know, points after. He hits it poorly again. And uh, Ron Lee fumbled it. It's recovered by Bruce Laird. No, he fumbled it. Now Laird picks it up. Laird at the 30-yard line, handling the ball one-handed, is down at the one at the 30-yard line. Laird couldn't find any uh, daylight. He couldn't find anywhere to go. Number 51, uh, Leon Toes, uh, came in to make the tackle. Baltimore goes to work. First down at their own 30. We got a little fight going down there with 47. Sanders Shiver trying to upset uh, Blount because they're going to be after Blount later on. Mel Blount, the right cornerback. Oh, that's the guy that, uh, oh, we got our road runner started now. We'll see what uh, Bertie Boy can do with the with Carr. Set him loose. With white lightning. Huh? Dowdy wide to the right. Carr goes wide to the left. And you've got uh, Roosevelt Leaks and Lydell Mitchell as setbacks in behind Jones in a standard pro set. Chester, the tight end on the right end of the line. Turn the get to the second man that's Lydell nowhere. He got into the middle of the line, squirted it through for maybe two yards. Jack Lambert, and if he isn't one of the best linebackers I have ever seen, I'll wait for a better one to come along. Lydell got two on his own, and there was no hole at all. Second down, eight Baltimore at their own 32. The Steelers, six. The Baltimore Colts, nothing. The Steelers scored on a 76-yard bomb. Bradshaw to Lewis, and Jarella missed the point after. Vince, I think the key to our, our offense today is I think uh, they've got to get a lot of production out of Lydell Mitchell. If they don't, I think they're going to be in trouble. Well, now both Dowdy and Carr are wide to the left side. Slot left is Dowdy, wide to the left is Carr. See if they stay that way, and they do. The takeaway, the gift to Roosevelt Leaks, left side, and he is just able to bang it out about to the 35-yard line. Goes Roosevelt and two or three of the Steelers in there to wrap him up, including number 34, Andy Russell, a 34-year-old linebacker. Trailing the play, number 78 is Dwight White. Now they're going to have to get some production out of the runners. That's right, whether it be Leaks or Mitchell, just to loosen it up a little bit. I had a dream last night that this guy, Ron Lee, was going to be the hero of the game, but he hasn't played yet. Well, he... well they've just dropped a defensive lineman, Ernie Holmes, out of the ball game, and they've added a defensive back, number 31, Donnie Shell. And here are the Colts in a double wing formation with a third and five of their own 35. Don McCauley, the only man behind quarterback Jones, he's back to throw. Sets up, looks, fires down the gut, incomplete. Mitchell, the receiver at the 45-yard line, dropped the football. It was a little bit behind him. Very catchable, but it hit him in the hip and uh, got away. So there was an offside, however. Well, we, got it. we got the ball. Baltimore retains possession. I don't know if it's enough for a first down, but it's uh, very close at the 40-yard line. That ball hit Mitchell in a bad place, the hands. Well, here's the five-yard step off, and they put it down, and it should be enough for a first down. They are indicating it. that, and it is offside, first down, a big break for the Colts to keep a drive going. At the 40-yard line, first down for Baltimore. 6-0 the Steelers lead here in the opening moments of play. Beautiful afternoon in Baltimore. Roger Carr and Dowdy both are wide to the right side of the set. That leaves Roosevelt Leakes and Lydell Mitchell as running backs behind Jones. Chester, tight end, left end of the line. Waiting for the snap to Jones. He turns, rolls back a bit to his right, sets up, fires. It is going to be incomplete and almost picked off by the leaping linebacker, Jack Ham. And that is one thing these Steeler linebackers do as well as anybody in football, drop back in the pass coverage. Uh, uh, Chuck, and Vince, he had a little bit of pressure on him too, Jones, because Joe Green and the right defensive end, for, they, were, they were in there putting a lot of pressure on Jones. And he had to throw the ball a little sooner than he wanted to. Well, I'm glad he threw a little higher than he wanted to because that uh, got away from him as a result, Donnie. 
All ready to go with a second and ten. Baltimore at their own 40-yard line. Dowdy trotting out wide right car. Goes the other way. They go to a double wing. On one wing, Dowdy on the right side and the left side, Lydell Mitchell. Leaks the man in the backfield behind Jones. Second and two. Whoops! The Steelers jump off and make contact. And if it's not illegal procedure against Baltimore, the Colts will pick up five. Mean Joe Green. I really believe Jones moved. If it's not illegal procedure against Baltimore, we'll know in a moment. Here's Pat Haggerty. He indicates offside Steelers. So it is second and five. The ball now at the Colt 45-yard line. And the only offense the Colts have shown so far has been the Pittsburgh Steelers' mistake. Maybe it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah, number 75, true. defense. You're right, Artie. It was Joe Green, number 75, who made contact. Second down and five, Baltimore at their own 45-yard line. The Steelers got unwheeled and untracked in a big hurry, leading six to nothing. Dowdy wide to the right side. Roger Carr split off on the left. Waiting for Joe, the staff to Jones in motion. Back toward the backfield, Dowdy to get to Lionel. The sweep of the right side makes a cut and gets pinched in there. And that great big linebacker, Jack Lambert, was over there to plug up that hole. And the uh, gain is good about to the 47-yard line where it's now third and three at the Colt 47. Well, they said they couldn't jam it down their throats. They're short testing them, aren't they, Dunny? Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't, they're wasting time. Yeah, we're doing what you think is best. And I think what we do best is throw the ball at the car. And that's what I thought Jonesy ought to start doing. Well, on a third down three at the 47, we'll know in a moment as Carr goes wide to the left side. Now he comes wide to the right. And uh, now they turn it into a double wing. Dowdy, the wing on the, le on the right side, and Lydell, the wing on the uh, left side. Only man behind the quarterback is uh, Don McCauley. Back to throw is Jones. Drills his pass. Caught by Lydell Mitchell. And out of bounds at the Steeler 47-yard line for a first down. Glenn Edwards made the tackle for the Steelers. The guy that made that play was McCauley picking up the blitzing middle guard. He did a good job of blocking for Jones then. Here they come. At the 48-yard line of the Steelers, first down for the Baltimore Colts. A drive to start it at their own 30, now at the Steeler 48, abetted by two uh, Steeler penalties. One was uh, an offside, both were offside penalties, as a matter of fact. We get Arthur to talk a little bit about Joe Green later on in the ballgame. He, every now and then, is found lining up offside. He really gets right on the nose of the football. He's closer to the center than he is to the guard. And we're in an eye formation. Leaks the front man, Lydell, the second man. Fake to Lydell, a deep drop. Jones firing for Broke. Here comes Roger Carr, but it's intercepted by Wagner. Wagner's got it to the Steeler 20. Along the 25, and is being chased by Roosevelt Leaks, and down he goes at about the 23-yard line. Burt Jones also in on the tackle. Well, Burt Jones really moved down there, but he had pressure on him. He really did. He got hit uh, just as he threw the ball. With the score, the Steelers six, the Colts nothing. There's a break in the action. Let's pause now for this message. Uh, the, it just might have been a missed coverage, and Jack just turned out to be the only man close enough to give any kind of a chase. But it was a perfectly thrown pass from Bradshaw to Lewis that accounts for the Steelers leading by a score of six to nothing. And under, you know, very strong pressure, uh, Burt Jones had just thrown. It was intercepted by Wagner of the Steelers, and they go to work at their own 22-yard line first down. Lewis wide to the left side of the set, and going the other way over there now is 88 Lynn Swan, and we've got Fuqua in the backfield, along with Franco Harris. Waiting for the uh, takeaway by quarterback uh, Bradshaw. He turns, gives it to the first man through, and that is uh, Franco Harris, and he is out about to the 28 maybe 29 or let's call it 28 yard line before bruce laird among others able to make the stop that was just straight block and that was a blue odd defensive line out on that play he picked up five six yards just a straight handoff second down and four for the steelers on a straight ahead buck from franco harris now fuqua and harris side to side on the backfield swan wide to the right side and it looks like stallworth now 82 is wide to the left side of the set and the turn, the give goes to Franco Harris, hit, shakes a tackler. Bruce Laird caught him and took him down in his own backfield. Darrell Lewis tried to put him down. He didn't get him, but he slowed him up enough so that Bruce Laird could get there and floor him at the Steeler 27, a loss of two. That's good defensive play. Lewis actually forced that play, Chuck, where Franco Harris couldn't turn the corner, and Bruce Laird came up like a defensive safety should. There goes Rocky Blyer leaving the field now. They're taking Blyer into the dressing room. He seems, uh, you know, walking all right. I haven't any idea what the injury is. We'll get the uh, information to you as quickly as we can right now. Steelers 
Third and six at their own 27. They have third and nine at their own 24 and scored the last time. Take away by Bradshaw. Deep drop wants to fire. No pressure. Fires down the middle. It is caught by Lewis at midfield, and he is taken down at the Baltimore 45. The tackle credit, Bruce Laird and Jack Wallace. First down, Steelers at the Colt 45. Watching this guy only throw two passes, Chuck, and no pressure at all. We're going to have to start blitzing, really. Because uh, nobody was in five yards of Brad Shaw when he got rid of the ball. Look at the deep drop, though, Dunny. He's 15 yards back. He looked like a punter from the distance back of the scrimmage line when he threw the ball. Nobody talked about Frank Lewis this week. He's two for two, one all the way. Yeah, well, then we better start blitzing, uh, Vince, to get some pressure on him. Swan goes wide to the right side, Stallworth wide to the left side, and it's first down at the Baltimore 46. Steelers in possession. The gift goes to Franco Harris, swings to the left side, and is going to be caught and down in his own backfield. Jackie Wallace got there enough to slow him up and trip him, and then Mike Barnes got into the flow along with Stan White, and they put him down maybe at the 45. We'll see what he is. Now they put it down at the line of scrimmage again. Second and 10 at the Colt 46. The injury to Rocky Blyer is a foot injury. However, he did not seem to give evidence of too much uh, discomfort as he walked into the dressing room. But they're back there to see if they can't rewrap the foot, of course, to give him some comfort and allow him to play a little bit better. Now Lewis back in is wide left, and Lynn Swan is wide to the right. Steeler, yeah, quarterback Yakes, he acts away without a fake. He wants to throw. No pressure again. He fires upfield and is knocked down by Jackie Wallace. And a penalty flag drops at the 25-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. Frenchy Fuqua was down there, and it might be Stan White interfering with him. Well, Chayoski tripped number 33. Who is? It's pass interference, Baltimore, first down for the Steelers. I think Chayoski tripped Fuqua. He's saying about uh, Rocky Fly is only to get a shot. First down. They got uh, Stan White, according to Pat Haggerty, the, uh, middle, the uh, outside linebacker on the right who... Uh, the ball is spotted now. They're going to put it down at about the 31-yard line of the Baltimore Colts on a pass interference penalty against Stan White. He tripped Fuqua. That is not to say he did it intentionally. He does not have to do it intentionally. Uh, you get your feet wrapped up, and that could happen. It has happened frequently, and it's a pass interference call against Stan White. Well, Fuqua is hurt, too. He's looking. Well, we've got Stallworth wide left, wide right swan. We've got Fuqua and Franco Harris as running backs. First down, Pittsburgh at the Baltimore 31. Bradshaw takes and gets it off to Franco Harris. Swinging around his own right end, stops, makes a cut, and down he goes at the 30. Baltimore defensing the running efforts of Franco Harris very well at this early point of the ball game. Jim Chayonski got tackle credit at the 30-yard line, second and nine. Tell you why technically are we doing such a good job against the sweeps? We've uh, not allowed anything on sweeps. I don't think we've ever allowed anything the whole season. I think we've been very strong against sweeps, Vince. I think our, our weakness, as far as the run is concerned, is running right out of our defensive line. Yeah. And they're not doing it. Frank Lewis wide to the left side, split out to the right side now is uh, Lynn Swan. He got Franco Harris and Fuqua. Here's a swing pass to Fuqua on the right side. He is making a cut and hit from behind at about the 27 or 8 yard line. Fred Cook got to him very quickly. Mike Barnes is also in on the play. And uh, Bruce Laird also down around the ball along with Darrell Luce. And the ball to spot at the Colt 27, gain of three, third and six. Vince, I think you'll find that our defensive line is uh, very agile as far as getting out and going to the flow. I don't think we're that strong against running right at them. Yeah. Third down and six at the Baltimore Colt 27-yard line. This game is going to be replete and full of big plays, and here's one of them right now. Lewis and Swan are wide to the right side. Stallworth splits off wide to the left side. All ready to go. The Colts jump off and got back. Now Franco Harris moves, he's in motion, and back to throw goes Bradshaw. The penalty flag is down, the throw coming to the end zone. Incomplete, intended for Lynn Spawn down around the five-yard line, but a penalty flag has been dropped in the Steeler backfield. Perfectly thrown ball, Swan couldn't quite pull it in. Taking a good catch to get it, but... Uh... Let's see what this is all about. Listen to the referee. It's illegal procedure against the Steelers. The illegal motion, I think an illegal shift from Franco Harris might be the reason. We'll know in a moment when we hear from Haggerty. Whoops, hold on a minute there, Mr. Referee. He got all tangled up with Sam Davis. Illegal motion, number 33, offense, no. decline. We're wrong, it was uh, Fuqua who was in motion, and it was declined by the Baltimore Colts, and here comes 
Roy Jarella to kick a field goal. It'll be spotted at the 37-yard line, meaning it's a 47-yard field goal effort. He's been successful four of seven tries outside the 40-yard line. Let's see if Mike Boss doesn't block this one. Well, they're going to put it down at the 35, so it becomes a 45-yard field goal effort. Well, if he hurts, we'll know now, because they said about it. They'll give him two, two chances to kick the ball. Down to the 10 and another kick over the goal post. All ready to go. We're waiting for the snap. Still wait for the snap. There it is. Spot. Kick on the way. Headed toward the uprights. It's going to be good. Jarella <laughs> has hit it from 45 yards out, and it's now the Steelers. Nine. The Baltimore Colts nothing with a score. Pittsburgh nine. The Colts nothing. Timeout here in Baltimore. Back in 60 seconds. Well, we'll have Jarella ready to kick off. Down on the five-yard line, Howard Stevens waiting. Jarella moves with the ball, hits it. He's got a kind of a sailing knuckleball to Jarella to Stevens at the 10 to the 15. Now the 20, 25, 30, and head on into number 54 and taken down at that spot, Marv Kellum, a linebacker. And they pick Stevens up and run him all the way back to the 15. And I don't know what's going on now, but all of a sudden, there's a little bit of a, a brawl. Somebody's with right. WNAD in Annapolis, Maryland, and all of our network stations, we pause now for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. Hi, this is Jack Edwards with the East 9, 7 until midnight on 68 WCBM at Media Radio Baltimore. WCBM Coach Radio. Some of these guys figure they shouldn't be touched. I don't know. Look at this. Oh boy, Howard, go after him. Well, in the first uh, offensive play, we had a carry up the middle by Lydell, good for two yards to the 32-yard line. Uh, uh, rather good for one yard to the 32-yard line, and now it's Baltimore, second down and nine at their own 32. The Steelers have just dominated the ball game through this first period with about 5.50 remaining. In a split backfield right now, Carr to the left side, down to the right side. Jones uh, looking at the Steeler defensive unit, takes it away, gets to Lydell. Lydell and a quick hitter goes straight up the middle to about the 35, and a penalty flag follows him. Andy Russell is there to rope him. They got a motion call against the Colts. I wouldn't be surprised if Pittsburgh... I think, the, I think these officials watched the game yesterday. They want to throw as many flags. Well, <laughs> uh, as far as I can see, uh, Arthur, maybe they do want to match them in flags thrown, but I can see justification for these penalty markers. Yeah. There were a few I watched in Oakland yesterday. I just couldn't figure out. Since I'm waiting for Roger uh, to, uh, for Bert Jones to really unload. Well, he's tried to unload. He hadn't had time to unload. I'm waiting for him to start the facts coming out of the backfield. He said, that Here, might. Here's Haggerty. Number 26, third down. They might not throw the backs coming out of there because of those super linebackers who were as fast as a lot of backs. It was Lydell Mitchell uh, who moved uh, prior to the snap, and they declined a motion penalty to bring up third down six, Baltimore at their own 35. Baltimore spills out of the huddle. Carr comes wide to the right side. Down he goes to the left side. They go to a double wing. And Lydell is the wing man on the right side. On the other side, it is uh, Dowdy. The takeaway by Jones. He rolls to the left, wants to throw, fires. Chester makes a heck of a catch at the 46-yard line. Raymond Chester, a diving grab, as good a catch as Raymond has made all year to pick up first down Baltimore at the 46. This is good. They got one-on-one. -on -one. He makes a real good move to the outside. Great effort. Really great effort. Yeah, another thing, if they're doubling the wide guys, Raymond's going to get open, and they're going to have to throw to him. How many times are you allowed to chug the bat, the end coming out one time? One time. Well, it, you ought to watch 24 against Carr. That's one time legally. One time if you don't get caught, 20 times. That's right. <laughs> Eye formation right now, leaks the front man, Lydell the second man, the give goes to Lydell. Lydell hits a pretty good hole and gets roped off his pins at about midfield. It's Jack Russell down, Andy Russell down at the bottom of the pile making the tackle for Pittsburgh. And somebody nailed him right up around the ears coming through the hole and knocked him off. A pickup of four brings up second down six, Baltimore at the 50. Danny, I like the way the Colts aren't panicking. They're behind nine to nothing, but they haven't gone to the offense that they'd use if it was a minute left in the game yeah. or anything. They're being conservative. When you go against what your game plans are and you just, you know, that's what you think you can do best against the team and that's what you got to stay with. 
Dowdy wide to the right side of the set car. The other way, Jones to the second man out of the eye. Light Al Mitchell bouncing off people down to the Steeler 48. And he is going to be roped and pulled back there. JT Thomas, Jack Ham in on the tackle. And also that good defensive uh, safety man, Glenn Edwards, uh, helped out. There was just no hole at all. We're, we're really coming up with a lot of third and fours and fives, though. That's tough. Yeah, we have had a third and five. We've had a third and three. We have had a third and six. Now a third and four. A situation like this, though, every once in a while you cross that ball up. Let's see if he doesn't go back to Chester again. Right down over the middle. Dowdy wide right car the other way. Uh, wing to the left side is Lionel Mitchell. McCauley, the only man behind the quarterback, Jones. Third and four at the 48 of the Steelers. Back to throw Burt. Looks, looks, yeah. throws it down the middle. Chester has got it. He's in the grass for the tackler. And down he goes at the Steeler 42-yard line. The tackler was Jack Ham. It's first down Baltimore. And Artie Donovan called it. Benchy said Chester right down the middle of that word. Absolutely. He had the, the left guy, linebacker playing. This guy, he's all over him. He's all over him like an octopus. At the Steeler, 41-yard line, Baltimore with a first down. Pittsburgh, nine. Baltimore, nothing. Time remaining first quarter, three minutes and nine seconds. Car wide left side, Dowdy wide right. Chester at tight end, right end of the line. I formation, leaks the front man, light L the second man. Ideal time for the bomb. Ideal, ideal. Watch but this. Jones play action, takes the handoff, rolls deep, rolls to his right, looks for the receiver, lobs it upfield, wide L at the third. Right down to the 25. Mitchell on the feet at the Steeler, 20 yard line. the option he might have been able to run for half of that Lionel's great elusive ability got him twice as much as he deserved he got it to the 20 the 21 yard game well a ball a Baltimore Colt drive to start at the Colt 31 yard line right now is to the, the Steelers 20 yard line Dowdy wide right, eye formation is shown. Roosevelt leaks the front man of the eye, line down the second man, Chester tight end, right end of the line. Waiting for the snap from Mendenhall. Jones has the first man as leaks. He gets the handoff and powers over the left side down to about the Steelers 16, where he is stacked up by L.C. Greenwood. Well, that's good. That's a good one there. It's, uh, he picked up, what, four yards? Four is right. Yeah, that's better than that was just a play before on the pass to Mitchell. That was where there was a busted play, really. Jones had, had to roll out of there, and he comes up with first down. A year ago in a game like this, a fellow like Burt Jones might have been running with that football. Today, a year's maturity is there. A year more of the smarts, as they sometimes say, and he hit his man, Lydell Mitchell. Second down, six of the Steelers, 16. Split in the backfield. Nobody behind the quarterback, Jones. Jones right back to throw. No fake. Sets up. Good protection. Firing to the end zone. Roger Carr. Touchdown. Touchdown, Carr. Well, you take a 17-yard bomb with a catch like that. A diving catch in the cinders in Oarsville, made famous by Jimmy Orr a few years ago. And well, you know, Vince, he really got hit on that play as he released that ball. I saw it. Well, Artie Donovan kept saying, Vince, I wonder where Carr is. Well, when's he going to go to Carr? I think he should go to Carr. He did go to Carr. The Colts are on the board with a touchdown. And now Tony Linhart will try to add the point after touchdown out of a hold by Bill Troop. Snap, spot, kick. Good. No penalty flags. And there is a timeout with a score. The Steelers, nine, and the Colts, seven. Well, the first half of the first quarter definitely belonged to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They hung up a quick nine points. The second half of this quarter belongs to the Baltimore Colts, so they have just come off a nine-play drive that covered 69 yards and was culminated on a 16-down touchdown pass. Jones to Roger Carr is now the Steelers. Nine, the Colts seven with a minute 17 remaining in the first quarter. Linhart to kick off downfield Theo Bell on the near sideline. Across the way, it looks like it's Fuqua. And uh, the middleman is, uh, again, uh, the fellow who got hurt on the opening kickoff, Ernie Poe. Here comes Rocky Barr back, but he's looking worse now than he did when he left the field. That's exactly right, he is. Here is Linhart moving on the football. Swings a leg, Tony hits it pretty good, high and fairly deep. 
and it's taken down there by Theo Bell at the 10 to the 15, laterally along the 20 to the 25, cuts outside in the open, and Theo Bell is up the midfield into cold territory, and it's going to be pulled out of bounds around the Baltimore 32 or 3 yard line. Theo Bell, the returner, and Ricky Thompson, the man who prevented the touchdown. You know, this week, Linhart told me that's the ideal kickoff to the side of the field about the eight yard line. That's the spot because the sprint men can get down if the ball's high enough as that was, but he got away from them, immediately broke it to the other side, and Pittsburgh is in super position at the Colt around the 32. That guy had to run a thousand yards. He ran away all the way on the other side of the field before first, he turned up. First down, Steelers at the Baltimore Colt, 32 three yard line. The turn, the handoff to Franco Harris off the right side into the open. He is down to the 20-yard line and then dang tackle to take him down at the 20-yard line. It looked like Jackie Wallace along with Stan White helped their roll the big man over at the 20. And he's got a first down. Steelers it, at the cold 20. It's just a straight handoff. Just good blocking at the point of attack. He's missed by Chayunsky. Yeah, it looks like Muffet is trying to get out of the way. And here comes Wallace over. Oh, he's been going for six. Not very fancy, but first down at the 20. This time they've got uh, number 82, John Stallworth, wide left, Swan, wide right. They're set. The takeaway, the give goes to Franco Harris into the middle. He fights for running room and crashes inside the 15-yard line before being taken down by Fred Cook. And Freddie had a little help from guys like John Dutton and Bruce Laird. And the gain is being marked right about at the 15-yard line. So it's second down and five. This guy's a great runner. He, the hole wasn't there at the point of attack, and he just... Veered a little bit to his right and picks up five yards. But big man, that's really moon. Stallworth and uh, Lewis uh, keep bringing plays in, and they're alternating. And we are now have come to the end of the first quarter with our score. The Steelers, nine, and the Colts, seven. And now they're down at the inside the 15-yard line. So Baltimore, if ever, needs a big defensive play now to kind of get the momentum back a little bit. I would look right now, Vince, I would look for Bradshaw, the throw pass. Off, uh, off uh, a play action. action. Yeah. Let me see now. Well, we've got Lewis wide to the left side and Swan wide to the right. Uh, Fuqua and uh, Franco Harris are the running backs behind Bradshaw. The turn, the give goes to Franco oh, Harris right. right up the middle, running over the top of people down to about the 11 yards. To the six yard line goes Franco Harris. Evidently, Bradshaw didn't hear me. Well, listen, I'll tell you. He he wore the same number. Does he remind you of Jim Brown, the way he runs? No, he runs over people. Jim Brown used to run around him. This yeah. guy is something else. It is first and goal. Pittsburgh at the Baltimore, just inside the Baltimore seven-yard line. First you know, Vince, and goal. You've got to give the dudes up front on the offensive line of the Steelers a little bit of credit, too, because there was a hole that I could have run through then. <laughs> and I couldn't run too fast. All ready to go with Fuqua and Franco Harris to split backfield. Nobody behind Bradshaw. First down at the six. Bradshaw gives it off to Fuqua off the right side. He has chopped off his pins inside the five. It looked like Chayunsky got a hunk of him, and then uh, Jack Wallace also peeled in there to take him down at about the LSC where they put the football down around the three-yard line. I thought maybe the crowd, who makes a lot of noise in the closed end, might help out here in the, in the goal line stand. Well, they're very quiet now. Yeah. And actually, uh, what Steelers' offensive line is doing now, they're just challenging Baltimore's defensive front four. Wallace coming out of the game. Dan Dickel, another linebacker, goes in. Pittsburgh lines up in the standard pro set. Shoulder to shoulder. Fuqua and Franco Harris. A give to Franco Harris. Left side. Down to about the one. And he, I don't know, the angle's too bad. I can't call. He didn't get in. He is shy. Uh, about a foot or so. Down around the cold one-yard line. Third down coming. Let's look and see if Bradshaw doesn't pull another play like, uh, what's his name, did yesterday, Stabler. Why? Huh? Take a chance on getting hurt with Franco in the game. Give it to Franco, and here we go. Okay, Vince. Okay. Well, they have a new running back in there. Franco Harris is out. Reggie Harris is in along with Fuqua. Third down and goal at the one-foot line. The turn. They give to Harrison off the right side. Touchdown, Steelers. Harrison off the right side. Went in without too much trouble. They just blew Chayunsky, Cook. And, and, and Mike Barnes right out of there. They, they folded to the left side of our defensive line right down into the middle. Leaving it up to Lloyd Mumford to try to hold them off, and that was an overmatch. And it just, it's just good running. It just blows through people. Well, the Steelers have run as well, if not better, than anybody in the league this year, and they're showing the Baltimore Colt uh, defensive unit that they didn't get here on good breaks and luck. Waiting for the point after touchdown. 
The snap uh, still wait. There's the snap, the spot. The kick is in the air, and Jarella does it this time. Let's see if there's a penalty flag down. There aren't any penalty flags. Kick is good, and so the Steelers have added another seven with a score. The Steelers 16, the Colts 7. There's timeout in Baltimore back in one minute. Hey, Vince, if I'm the coach of the uh, Colts, i got to move Howard Stevens up to the 15-yard to the line. Yeah. Because they have a running head start on these dudes coming down. This guy isn't going to kick it any further than that. I hope he hears me. He hits and missed it again. It bounces. Ron Lee picks it off to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, up the 40, to the 45, up to the 47-yard line goes Ron Lee. Once he made up his mind, there wasn't anywhere to duck and dodge. Lee put his head down and just carried it to people. Donnie Shell was among those to take him down at the Baltimore 47 first down. Outstanding kicking goal. <laughs> Torella limping off. Didn't hurt him with a 45-yard field goal. I think it hurt his pride. <laughs> Roger Carr, wide left, wide to the right. Glenn Dowdy, uh, Roosevelt League's front man in the eye. The second man, Lydell Mitchell. Uh, Jones and the Colts are down and set. Waiting for the takeaway, the gift to Lydell. The second man, he stumbled and then cut into a hole. Cuts across the 50 down to the Steeler 47-yard line. Goes Lydell Mitchell before he is taken down by mean Joe Green. And also assisting big number 78, Dwight White. Now, they ran that play to the weak side, Donnie. You know, why, why was that effective where it's running to the strong side? I, I don't know, but I'll tell you, uh, the blocking at the point of attack, Vince, was there. And I figured maybe they can do something. As I said before, if we're going to do anything, Mitchell's got to have a good day. He picked up six yards then. Dowdy wide left, wide right car. Eye formation this time. Leaks the front man. Lydell the second man. Second and four at the Steeler 47. Jones State gives the Lydell off the right side. Hit at the 45 and pulled down. And the guy on the top of the pile was Jack Ham, but I don't think he got the tackle credit. And on the bottom of the pile, you got two or three of the Steelers rolling up out of there. Number 63 in on the tackle, Ernie Holmes. Gain of two, third down and about two. Vince, that's yes. a little bit different from the third and five and six and so on. Let's see if Jones doesn't come out of play action and throw that long one. Who's in there? Right out the of McCauley is in along with Roosevelt Leaks. Dowdy a wing on the right side, double tight ends, third down and two of the Steeler 45. Waiting for the snap to Burt Jones. Still waiting, still waiting. Turns, gives to McCauley. McCauley dives over the right side, and I don't know whether he's made it or not. It's a little bit too close to say. He may have come up a little short. We'll know when they untangle it more correctly and accurately when the official spots the football. Here. Might be a little short. All right, now what do you do here? Do you punt the ball and try to put them in a hole? They've scored every time they had it. Got a half a yard to go on for Hey, I'll tell you what, David Lee has been great getting the ball down there on the inside the 10 yard line, right? Right. Well, why not do the same thing? I think Chuck, uh, what's his name? Marshall Broder is smart doing this. It's fourth down and less than a yard. Downfield Theo Bell, who came back 60 yards with the kickoff a moment ago, is waiting for the David Lee punt. Theo is uh, all around the 10-yard line of the Steelers. Let's see whether David Lee intends to hang it up, whether he'll kick it to Bell, whether he'll kick it out of bounds. We'll know after Stan White, who quarterbacks on the snap. And they've got a 10-man rush of the Steelers. They are going to pressure, hopeful of blocking. Forrest Blue takes a last look, still has a snap, now snap. Snap is perfect. No pressure, they got a return. And David Lee angles toward the near sideline, coming over Theo Bell. It's going to go out of bounds, inside the 10. At the nine-yard line, David Lee has kicked it out of bounds. Oh, we got a fight going on down here. Number 58 and 33. Go at him. Well, that's uh, Jack Lambert and Randy Hall. Well, you trade those two, wouldn't you? Well, I got news for you. Yeah, but well, if you're a stealer, you don't fight in front of the Colts. That's you're crazy. You do if you're Jack Lambert. You oh. fight anywhere. <laughs> Have news for you. He'd give a good accounting of himself, no matter whose bench he was fighting in front of. He is just a, I think, one of truly one of the very best, most aggressive, strong, physical, domineering middle linebackers I've ever seen. I think Gracie could have taken him on. Maybe. I'll tell you, there's a little feeling and a little emotion in this contest with 10:57 remaining in the first half, and the Steelers leading by a count of 16 to seven. Something against Pittsburgh at the nine-yard line. Who cares? That is to say, at their nine-yard line, who cares? Uh, we, they will take, we will take the penalty. I, 
Here it is. Good darn. Number 87, offense in motion. Well, the tight end, number 87, was in motion. That's Larry Brown. And the Colts have, as already suggested, declined the penalty. It's second and nine Steelers at their 10. Lewis and number 82, John Stallworth, shuttled in and out with plays. And now Lewis is in there going wide left. And Lynn Swan is wide to the right. Fuqua and Franco Harris running backs behind the quarterback, uh, Bradshaw. Down and set. Take away. Bradshaw wants to throw in second and nine. No pressure. Going for broke. Here comes the bomb. Franklin Lewis is there. And he makes a... He tried to make the catch and just couldn't handle it this time. Right alongside him, it looked like it was number 20 or 25, Ray Oldham, went up in the air. The ball slightly underthrown. Well, let me tell you something. This guy's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pride in his offensive line because he's got all the time to really throw that ball. And sooner or later, he's going to come up with six more if they don't if they don't deck him a couple of times. Well, the coverage a lot better that time. As Chuck said, though, Johnny, the ball did not thrown quite far enough. Right. I think Olin Ol had pretty good coverage behind him, though. Olin might have gotten the ball had he thrown it far. I thought Lewis made an heck of an effort to get his hands on it. Let's see if we don't blitz this time. All right, Stallworth wide to the left side, Swan wide to the right. A split backfield over to Mike, quarterback Bradshaw, Fuqua, and uh, Franco Harris down the set. Take away. Bradshaw wants to throw a shallow drop to the goal line. Fires down the middle. Caught by Swan. And Swan is tackled at the 20-yard line for what appears to be a Steeler first down. Chayunsky made the tackle, but Swan made a beautiful leaping grab for a first down of the 20. And extended the ball to get the first down. That was a great play by Swan. Not only the catch, this but his ball was right on the front of money, too. His presence to He's drilled it in out. there. Yep. And he takes a shot. It is first down, Pittsburgh at the 20-yard line. The Steelers have scored every time they've handled the football in the first half of the ball game today. Wide to the right, Swan. Wide to the left is Lewis this time. Fuqua and Franco Harris are the running backs. They're down and set. Take away the gift to Franco Harris. Stutters through a little bit of a hole and got stripped up coming through there. The cold defensive front four just shut off the play. Down on the bottom of the pile, Freddie Cook. And you can look for Joe Airman. He'll have to be down there somewhere. You really don't see a lot of the activity of Airman, but he is normally right in the middle of anything that comes along that line. Well, if Luce had made the tackle, it would have been a two-yard loss. He's the guy to force the play. And he forced Franco Harris to cut back into where the flow was coming over. So, you know, you need help out there. And he got it. It is a team game. Second down, nine Steelers at their own. 21-yard lines. Swan, wide right. Stallworth, wide left. Again, it's Fuqua and Harris. Rocky Blyer out with a foot injury. We don't know whether he'll be able to return or not. It's Franco Harris to carry. Bounces out around the left end into the daylight up to the 25 and caught from behind, crossing the 25-yard line by Jim Chayunsky again, the active middle linebacker of the Baltimore Colts. But that Harris is really something to behold. Dutton was also around the ball. He fakes inside and then bounces outside in the manner of a scat back. Harris has got more angles in the geometry book the way he moves. Well, the gain is good for four yards. It's third and five Steelers at their own 25. That's not a bad line by the Hall of Famer down the line there, Vince. I, I like practice that. all week on that. I like that. More <laughs> angles in the geometry book. All right. Third down, five Steelers to the 25-yard line. Lewis wide, left swan the other way. Back to throw goes Bradshaw. No pressure. Has time. Drills it to Franco Harris out in the flat. Franco one-on-one -on -one with Stan White. Down he goes at the 30-yard line. He may have a first down again. That's just pure second effort, too, believe me. Stan, Stan did a good job, you know, uh, making sure he made the tackle, but Harris had the momentum to get the first down. we got to start doing something on defense, believe me. we got to start pushing. we got to change up our defenses around a little bit because you give this guy this kind of time to throw the ball, he's going to eat you up. I'll tell you what, it's either put some pressure on him or go get him a rocking chair. It is Steeler ball, first down at the Steeler 30. And they lead it 16 to 7, and the Colts uh, front four really have not been close to putting pressure on Bradshaw yet. Uh, it is Stallworth wide left side. Here's an inside handoff to Frank uh, Fuqua. Off the right side, he goes pulled down by the linebacker moving in quickly, Jim Chayunsky. They're really doing a pretty good job against the rush. They are that. I mean, they, they really are, but uh, as Dunny keeps saying, we got to get to the passer. And this may be a passing down second and about a long seven. Frank Lewis comes in, Stallworth goes out. Lewis and Stallworth shuttle plays in for 
uh, quarterback Bradshaw, and I think this was a request on the part of Terry. He mm -hmm. just went to the coach, Noel, had a little bit of a meeting, and he said, look, coach, I think we can do a better job if you do it that way, and the Steelers have, you know, been happy to oblige. And he's just defense for home. Here's a rollback by Bradshaw, sets up the fire, sideliner coming in, is caught and down at about the 47-yard line. Right in front of the Colt bench, it's Lynn Swan on the receiving end, covering him was Lloyd Mumford. First down, Pittsburgh on their own 47, and for WSBA in York, and all of our network stations, we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Metromedia Baltimore Colts Football Network. For the best collegiate coverage, follow the University of Maryland Terrapins on 68 WCBM, Metro Media for Baltimore. At the 47. Uh, Stallworth wide left, Swan wide right. Here's the turn, give off to Pupa. Pupa comes into the Harris, comes into the middle, breaks into the clear of the 40. Harris is in a foot race trying to beat Ray Oldham. Oldham slows him up and then came back with a second effort. Oldham stops him inside the five. 47 yard first off by uh, Franco Harris and Oldham slowed him up. He tried to put a move on Oldham and that gave Ray a chance to make a second move on Harris. Was just and a, he took him down. It was just a quick track up, trap up the middle. Actually, nobody even got a hand on Harris coming through the line. And this goes to show you, you know, during the week, these guys are saying what they were going to do and all that. But they haven't done anything yet. Now, last play that Bradshaw caught through, the closest guy all day to him was Dutton, and he knew it. he got about three yards away from him. So they got to start to buckle down and start playing football. From the Steeler nine, they have now come to the Baltimore Colt four. First and goal, Bradshaw gives off to a back Cunningham, and he is going to be hit, and Harrison rather hit at about the three-yard line for no gain. The ball carry again, Reggie Harrison, number 46, who scored one of the Steeler touchdowns this afternoon, is stopped at about the four-yard line. Second and goal. This, I think some of the fans down there with their radios on and their TVs down better make some ought to noise. start making noise. That's right. Well, they better start doing something. Well, you know, it is, it, it's straight. This is a rather conservative kind of a team, Pittsburgh. Nothing fancy at all. Boy, they just bring it down. Down, Harris and Fuqua are the setbacks, and they got Stallworth as a wing to the left side. Second down and goal from the Colt three. The give goes to Harris off the left side. He, he may have fumbled the football. There's a big pile up for it at the two. He got it. Baltimore's got the ball. break in the action with the score. The Steelers 16, the Colts 7. And the Steelers had gone 89 yards in 10 plays, only to fumble to the Colts. Some of the Steelers coaches in a state of shock over on the other side. Of the field. I don't think Harrison ever had control of it. It looked like he was juggling as he, as he took the hand off. And then, of course, when it's loose like that, they punched at it and White got it. Well, Baltimore ball first down at the Baltimore two-yard line. And they come out into a standard pro set, shoulder to shoulder. Roosevelt leaks and Lydell Mitchell, car wide left, out of the other way. Jones looks over the Steeler defense. They fake a blitz to turn. The give goes to the second. Mitchell breaks through. Up over the 10 to the 11-yard line goes Lydell. And uh, Mr. Russell, Andy by name, made the tackle. Now the and car go wide to the right side of the set. Tight end on the left end of the line for Baltimore. Waiting for the snap to Jones. Turns, gives to Lydell. Lydell spins through a little bit of a hole and gets chopped off his pins after picking up the first down around the 14, 13 yard line. A uh, standard pro set shoulder to shoulder. The backfield leaks and Lydell Mitchell. Waiting for the snap to Jones. He fakes, rolls back to throw, back inside the five, takes his time, throws the bomb to Dowdy. It's over his head at the cold 45 yard line. Incomplete pass, just a little too strong, intended for Dowdy. Second and 10, Baltimore at their 13. You know, this time, Jones has a split backfield. Nobody directly behind the quarterback. Dowdy, right side, Carr, left side. Uh, the takeaway, the give goes to Lydell. Hit in his own backfield. He really got belted in his own backfield and taken down at the line of scrimmage. And the man who ripped in there might have been mean Joe Green. It was. He made Carr, wide right, wide left, Dowdy. They're in a double wing, actually. The only man behind the quarterback is Don McCauley. Jones looks over the Steeler defense. They're a down four. The takeaway by Jones. He fakes. Oh, too much Whoops, ripples are blowing down there. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. It probably took too much time against Baltimore. That's it. And Chester split a little bit on the left end of the line. Third and 15. Jones rolls to his left, wants to throw, has a little time, ducks for a pressure, and then gets nailed back at the two yard line. All over in big number 78, Dwight White. Russell was also there. And mean Joe Green uh, set the, you know, kind of set the, the table, and they finished it off. Jonesy's saying right now, for God's sake, somebody hit him. 
do something. Now we got a real problem. Lee's going to have to punt with his foot on the end line, and they'll put 10 men up, I guess. I would think so. The ball is spotted back at the two-yard line, and David Lee is punting at about the goal line. The snap, here comes David Lee's punt. He hits a high, booming spiral. Coming back onto this Lynn Swan at the cold 45. Laterally along, it makes a cut over the 40, and down is a hit by the penalty flag oh, goes down, oh. another penalty flag goes down. We'll get 30 Inside yards. the 35 of the 40-yard line, and number 56 of the Baltimore Colts, Ed Simonini, is madder than a wet hen, whatever that is. <laughs> But he was really upset, and apparently the reason he was so upset was because of some of the penalty flags. Personal foul clipping against the Steelers. Hey, look, the two flags, two clippers, will he get 30 yards? No, you don't get 30, he gets a choice. Oh, okay. We'll take the one from back here around the 39 or 45-yard line and put Pittsburgh back in his own territory. If, if you get... Well, there's a timeout with a score of the Steelers, 16, the Colts, 7. Nice cars, making them narrower, shorter, lighter. They'll offer only the cut-down size. But Ford has a better idea. Choice. A full-size Ford LTD that kept its size. And the all-new trim-size LTD, too. The quiet-riding full-size LTD offers what its major competition doesn't. More trunk space, more hip and shoulder room, and a longer wheelbase. If you prefer a trimmer size, choose the new LTD, too. With LTD's kind of quality and comfort in a... sportier car at a trimmer price. Some car makers will offer only cut down sizes in 77, but Ford offers a choice. Full size Ford LTD, trim size LTD2. Test drive one today. See your local Ford Jeeper, the better idea guys. From the Steeler 46, Bradshaw has thrown a pass incomplete and a penalty flag dropped in the play. Personal foul against the Baltimore Colts. Can you imagine this? <laughs> Lloyd Mumford may have been the offender. We'll know when Pat Haggerty informs us after he walks off the real estate. Then we'll find out who the guilty party is. It was Mumford number 42, I'm almost sure. Well, it wasn't against the guy hitting a passer because nobody's done that today yet. No. No. He could have ate a sandwich then. Here's the announcement right now. Tune in. First foul. Defense. First down. Personal foul. Defense. First down. Who was it, Hagley? And Ted Marchabrota, a little upset with the officiating at the moment, as the Steelers have a first down now at the Baltimore Colt 39-yard line. And it is a... Uh, Franco Harris and Fuqua. Fuqua the ball carry off the right side. They snow in there and stop him around the 36-yard line with guys like Chayunsky up on the top of the pile. And down on the bottom of the pile, the last guy getting up appears to be Fred Cook. And the gain is from the 39 to the 36, second and seven. He'll come right back with that long pass now, Vince. Boy, what time he's had. Oh. Unbelievable. The last one, he could have ate a hero sandwich, not just a plain sandwich. <laughs> Second and seven for the Steelers. The ball at the Colt 36. And there's a timeout being whistled for down on the field. Two minutes. And we've, huh? come to, oh, we've come to the two-minute warning. That's exactly what happens here in Baltimore. There's the two-minute warning back in 60 seconds. Doing a simply magnificent job against the defensive unit of the Baltimore Colts. Bradshaw has just, uh, he's not even got the uniform dirty yet. With a second and seven at the Baltimore 36. Gives the Fuqua, sweeps to the left side, rips down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line, goes Frenchy. He's very close to another Steeler first down, and we'll wait for the indication from the official. And they put that football down. It's right about at the 29-yard line. And it's so close that I believe the officials now take time to measure. Chayunsky made the tackle. We'll see whether or not the sweep on the left side by Fuqua has picked up another Steeler first down. Vince Fuqua is showing off in front of his Morgan State alumni. I was going to say, that's what's happened. Been in the league eight years. You used to hear a lot about him when he was a young player, but they mentioned Morgan a whole lot lately. In is he, to, he made the first time. Is he the guy that wears the shoes with fish in his heels? That's, that's the, the guy. guy. Huh? Yeah, he's one of the flashier dresses in the him, You know where. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, he's a heck of a guy, is Frenchie. He's really a dude. I've been with him a couple of times, and a fun-loving guy and a, a pretty good football player, is Frenchie. 
Baltimore 29. Uh, Lynn Swan wide to the uh, wide to the right side, and Alex Stallworth wide to the left. Uh, Fuqua and Harris, the running backs, are down and set. Take away, the give goes to Harris. Harris is hit by Fred Cook in his own backfield and stopped right at the 30-yard line. I think somebody forgot who they were blocking on that, Sonny. We just... In, in fact, Cook was in there so fast, he almost hit the handoff. Hit left, wide, right, Swan. A standard throw set backfield. Second and 11 Steelers. Bradshaw back to throw again. Sets up, has time. Lobs it all around and Swan for the touchdown. Lynn Swan put a move on Mumford. Mumford fell down. And Swan went in without anybody near it. Touchdown Steelers who are just running over the Colts in the first half. Chuck, you can say anything you want. It should have been biasing for Mumford to have to cover a guy like that. But hell, when you don't get the guy doesn't have to throw the ball real quick. He doesn't get any pressure at all put on him. Hey, a lot of defensive backs are going to get embarrassed. Well, it is now up to 22. We'll see if uh, Jarella can add the 23rd point. We're inside the two-minute mark. And Bradshaw has just had absolutely letter-perfect protection from his offensive line. The sack pack of the Colts haven't been able to do anything. Not a thing have they been able to do insofar as putting even a little bit of pressure on Bradshaw. Donnie, why would you figure they wouldn't have, been, have blitzed up to this point? You figure they'd pick up the blitzers and burn you even I, worse? I, well, uh, maybe, but I can't understand why they're doing this. They're going to have a four-man rush. They're, we, they're not getting any pressure from anywhere. Yeah. Maybe Dutton a little, little bit, don't you see? But, but he, uh, he's coming from the blind side, and, and uh, Bradshaw right. doesn't see that to even bother him. Right, absolutely right. And, of course, you got to do something. Well, he walked off a penalty against the Steelers, to, and now the point after touchdown kick from the 15 is in the air. It looks pretty good. No penalty flags are down, and the score is on the board. With about 53 seconds uh, here on the first half remaining, the Steelers are handing it to the Colts, 23-7. to Timeout with the score, Pittsburgh 23, Baltimore 7. Well, yeah, that's Mansfield. That's Mansfield. 56? Yes, sir. Yes. Mansfield is uh, lined up uh, behind the football, all ready to go, and he's a straightaway orthodox type of a kicker. He missed it, shanked it, better get rolling it. along the... Ron Lee takes it out of bounds at about the 34-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. We're getting outstanding field position, but we're not doing anything. First, the Steelers, right to this moment in the football game, have been too much football team for the, for the Colts to handle. The Steelers have been just that good. Back to throw Jones. Drills it down the middle. Over the head. Intercepted by number 27, Glenn Edwards of the Steelers. Down to the Colt 35 and out of bounds goes Edwards. They got enough time to get another one. 43 seconds. That's plenty of time for them. That's the point I was trying to make. The Steelers are just that good that they make anybody look bad. Back to throw goes Bradshaw. He sets up. Penalty flag is dropped. A little bit of pressure thrown to Lynn Swan in the clear at the 30. Swan to the 25, outside to the 20, and out of bounds at about the 19 goes Swan. That's going to be our best defense. It's All the right flag. Oh, Bradshaw in under center. The time remaining about 38 seconds. Taken away by Bradshaw. Deep drop wants to throw. And he runs up into the pocket hey. and into the arms of Joe Ehrman, who made the tackle. And Bradshaw comes up calling for time. Stallworth wide and left. Bradshaw on the handoff to Franco Harris on the draw. Harris is in the open down to the 40-yard line in the clear. And Darryl Luce tries to get to him. And Luce makes the tackle and rolls him out of bounds at the 22-yard line with 17 seconds on the clock. Just seems the Steelers are able to do it any way they want to. The Steelers have just dominated the game. Bradshaw back to throw. Sets up. Looks for some help. Fires out of the flat to Harris. Harris to the 15-yard line. On his feet at the 10. And inside the 10 to the 8-yard line goes Franco Harris. Mumford made the finishing tackle. And the clock rolls down to 7 seconds. And the Steelers stop it once again. Well, I think they're as awed and uh, maybe shocked uh, as the Colt football team. The kick is in the air. On the way. Looks okay. Is it all right? Yes, sir, it's fine. And Jarella has kicked a 25-yard field goal uh, to add three more. And now it's the Steelers, uh, 26, and the Baltimore Colts, 7. Now, there used to be a time when you could say you win some, you lose some, and some are rained out, but this is a different game. <coughs> I've got an expression for that, but I can't say it on the air. The Steelers, right to this moment in the football game, have been too much football team for the for the Colts to handle. The Steelers have been just that good. You've got a heck of an afternoon's work cut out for you. Chuck, at halftime, they told me that Jarella doesn't have a bad leg. There's another part of his anatomy that is hurting. The groin, yes. Yeah. He's got a groan and groin right now. And it really is giving him some problems, and that's the reason Mansfield has been there kicking off. Jarella will try the second half kickoff, however. Stevens is waiting inside the 10-yard line between the 10 and the 5. Jarella hits it, 
He's got this pretty good. Howard Stevens takes the 10, job bobble the ball, recovers to the 20. Outside, 25, 30, up to the 35, and ducks straight ahead to about the 38-yard line. Howard Stevens returns to about the 38. Donnie Shell stops him, and the offensive unit of the Colts takes the field with the Steelers leading by a score of 26 to 7. Here comes the second half. Had a pretty good return. Nothing up the middle, and he didn't try to knock over anybody, and he got it outside, got 10 yards more than he might have figured. Well, the same offensive unit is on field for the Baltimore Colts. Dowdy is wide right, Carr wide left. Lydell Mitchell and Roosevelt leaks to the running backs. Jones looking to steal a defense, gives to Lydell to the right side. He ducks into a little bit of a hole and manages to punch out two quick yards to about the 40-yard line before he is taken down by Jack Ham. They spot the ball just about at the 40-yard line where it is second down at eight Baltimore at that spot. Defensively, you've got L.C. Greenwood, Dwight White, Holmes, and Mean Joe Green. There, that's front four. They've got Ham and Lambert and Russell as linebackers on the corners. Hold on a minute as the Colts come into a split backfield second and eight at the 40. Dowdy wide right, car wide left. Jones wants to throw a deep drop back to his 30. Drills his pass incomplete. It sailed away from Lydell Mitchell. It'll be third down and eight Baltimore at the 40-yard line. And that Steeler defensive unit that we're talking about out of the corners on the one corner. You've got uh, J.T. Thomas on the other corner. You've got Mel Blonde and the safety men are Mike Wagner and Glenn Edwards. Jones was five for ten first half at two interceptions. Now he faces a certain passing situation, third and eight at the 40. And they drop uh, Lambert out as a middle linebacker, and they add a new uh, defensive back by the name of Jimmy Allen. So they've got five defensive backs on a third down and eight at the 40. Jones looks over the defensive alignment, yanks it away, no fake, wants to throw. Jones is uh, lobbing it upfield, and it's going to be overthrown and intended for Don McCauley. Covering McCauley was a very good linebacker named name of Jack Ham. And the Colts' first offensive thrust in the second half dies very quickly, and the Steelers force the punt. So you see the advantage, the ability of a linebacker to cover the back coming out of the backfield. McCauley runs good patterns, does a good job on third downs. Ham was with him all the way and Bird had overthrown him. Uh, punting situation and downfield, Lynn Swan is going to return the punt. He's standing at about the Steeler 30. Now he backpedals a little bit. David Lee will kick it from about the Baltimore Colt 32. Stan White looking over the uh, defensive alignment of the Steelers as uh, their punt return team is on. They've got an eight-man rush out of the Steelers. We wait for Forrest Blue's snap. The snap is good. Here comes the punt. He almost had it blocked. A good punt by David Lee. Swan takes it at the Steeler 23. Uh, goes outside to the far sideline up to the 30. It rolled out of bounds over on the far side of the field. It looks like it might have been Dan Dickel who ran him out at about the 30-yard line somewhere in that vicinity. Steelers go to work for the first time in the second half. The fellow who almost blocked the punt for the Steelers was Jim Allen, uh, defensive back. But David Lee still got it away. It's first down for the Steelers. The ball resting at their own 30. And Bradshaw brings him out of the football. Lewis coming out wide to the right side. That means Swan is the other way. they got Frenchy Fuqua and Franco Harris as running backs. Waiting for the takeaway by Bradshaw. Gives it to Franco Harris. He's off the right side. Bursts through up over the 35 to the 36-yard line. And I think Arthur Donovan, that may set the trend of things for the Steelers in the second half. Actually, what that was, Chuck, that was just a delayed buck. And uh, Harris fakes going to his left and comes back, gets the handoff, and goes right up to his right. Hey, they're just blocking in there. They got the hole opens up and he's just running up there. Well, they got about a second down and maybe three, a little bit longer than three for the Steelers near the uh, Steeler 37. This time Stallworth is wide left, wide right is Lynn Swan, split in the backfield, nobody behind the quarterback, Bradshaw, waiting for the snap to the quarterback, pitches it out to Franco Harris, sweeps the right side and gets got through two tacklers and then it's going to be rolled down around the uh, Steeler 43 or four yard line. John Dutton finally caught up to him. Yeah, I'll tell you about Mr. Harris, you don't give him any moves to make him fall down. You better pop him. And Bruce Ladd is the guy that really misses him yeah, first. He, misses. he comes up, he's in good and he gets blocked. There's a miss by Mumford. A well, Mumford on Harris. I mean, that's like me trying to knock you down, Donovan. I think you could do it, Bruce. Oh, give me blind side the plank. It is a first down, Steelers at the Steeler 43. 
Again, they split the backfield to the uh, Steelers with Fuqua and Harris. The turn, the gift to Fuqua, sweep on the left side. He gets a block, piles over the 45 to the 47-yard line. Maybe beyond that before he is finally hit and taken down by Jim Chayonsky, who has made his fair share of tackles this afternoon. They're spotting the football at the Steeler 46-yard line. A gain of some three, second down and seven. Steelers lead it by a score of 26 to 7. They have just blown the Colts right out of the ballpark in the first half. And they send Stallworth and Lynn Swan wide to the right side of the set. Uh, Swan is split and a, and a slot to the right is Stallworth. Second down, seven. Back to throw. Bradshaw sets up, fires his pass. Caught and taken down to the Baltimore 45 yard line is Stallworth. Lump Mumford made the tackle. And it is a first down for the Steelers at the Baltimore 45. He threw the new web there. He threw it invincible on a lot of people there. First down, Steelers. The drive started for them on their own 31 yard line is now the Baltimore Cove 45 yard line. Against uh, Swan, wide to the right side. This time, Frank Lewis is wide to the left. Again, it's Fuqua and uh, Franco Harris is running backs. Waiting for the takeaway. Here's a fake handoff by Bradshaw. Rolls to set up, firing the bomb. He just puts it up for grabs. Lewis is running to it, and he can't get to the football. And uh, Ray Oldham is complaining of offensive pass interference. we got a he flag here now. Just back in the area where he threw it. Well, did they hit him? I don't think they hit him. Well, they say interference, uh, illegal use of the hands against the Steelers. That's the preliminary side. Maybe you got one too many head taps in there. Huh? I think we got at least got one thing going for us in the penalties, but not much else. Now, taking a look at the penalties, uh, the Steelers were penalized four times in the first half, the Colts three times. And here's a big walk off. Listen to referee Pat Haggerty. Illegal use of the hands, number 15. Illegal use of the hands takes the ball from the Colt 45 back to the Steeler 45. They got Jim Clack again. Yes, they did. They say, Vince, if you miss a guy, you still try to grab him and take a chance of getting called. Swan wide right, Stallworth wide left, split in the backfield on a first down and 20. Back to throw goes Bradshaw, kind of a shallow drop, lobs it upfield to Franco Harris. Harris is hit by two of the Colts and taken down at the 49-yard line. At the 49-yard line, Bruce Laird was there to help in the tackle, along with Darrell Luce. So a gain of four makes it second down and 16 now for the Steelers. They've got to go to the Baltimore Colt 35 for a first down. He will come right back with this draw play again, Chuck. I'd be watching for a vice Jaronski. Well, we've got a slot right in Lewis and a split to the right in Lynn Swan and a flank left uh, on the part of Stallworth. Back to throw on the draw comes Harris and Mike Barnes stood him up. Dutton misses him and then got him at the second time and held him at the 46-yard line. Dutton got to try to take him up around the head and got rolled off him and Dutton went down and grabbed him low and made the tackle and Franco Harris, I'm sorry to say, is slow getting up. Franco was uh, shaking a little bit on the previous play, Chuck. He limped back to the huddle just slightly. The draw and Dutton hit him head up. He bounced and he grabbed him again. And Franco is uh, conscious, but he is uh, being a, I think these <laughs> aromatic spirits of ammonia, whatever they have in those little cartridges being applied to get him clear-headed again. A little shot of uh, a little bit of eggnog or something. Wake you up real quick. to the sideline. He is out of the ball game. I hope we'll see him again. Reggie Harrison takes his place as a running back. So it's Harrison and Fuqua. The Steelers now show the Colts a double wing. The Colts almost jump off and get back. Bradshaw back to throw third. Pressure coming. Bradshaw runs. Now throws and complete upfield. And it is going to be fourth down and 19. And the Colts have stopped the Steelers for the first time today. Oh, look for the fumble. It's the first time they've stopped us. When is the first time they put any pressure on Bradshaw, too? It's supposed to show you they're only human also. All ready to go. We'll have a punt. Walden is on field to do the punting for the Steelers. Down around the 10-yard line waiting is Howard Stevens. 
Baltimore with a 10-man rush. The only man downtown is Stevens. The snap, here comes the pressure. He got it away. End over end. Stevens takes it to Baltimore. 20 straight ahead, 25, 30, and trapped and pulled off his pins at about the 32-yard line. Linebacker Toes got there. And Mike Webster also on the tackle. Baltimore takes over. A WBOC in Salisbury, Maryland, and all the network stations. Pause now for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. This is John Davis. Join me mornings and afternoons for complete sports on WCBM Metro Media Baltimore. WCBM Coach Radio. Coach Radio. A split backfield behind Jones. First down of the Baltimore 31. Take away by Burke. No fake. Wants to throw. Sets up. Takes his time. Throws down the gut. Chester has got it. Up the Steeler 45. Right down the middle of Raven Chester. First down Baltimore inside the Steeler 45. That's good pass protection there. You have time to throw the ball. And they figure, you know, behind as much as they close saw, they got to be going deep. they got to open they up. Double covering those wide guys, and Raymond is open in the middle. they got to get one now. Brown is with him. Listen. The big wheels got him going up there in the upper deck. Oh, with the spoke. Car wide to the left, uh, Dowdy wide to the right, split in the backfield, nobody behind Jones. First down, Steeler 45, they're down and set, waiting now for the takeaway. Jones may be audibleizing, a long count, turns and gets it to Lydell. Lydell skirts through the middle, finds a hole and fights inside the 40 to the Steeler 37-yard line. And Jack Ham stood him up there, and Lydell Mitchell found daylight when there didn't appear to be any daylight, and ran to the Steeler 37. Second down and two. Jack Ham and Lionel used to be teammates for Joe Paterno. I'll come to life this. a little bit after the half, huh? Do I? We come to life a little bit, Vince. The crowd's coming to life, so this helps. Come on, crowd. Franco Harris out with bruised ribs. Cars wide left, uh, wide right, Dowdy, a standard pro set backfield. Lydell and Roosevelt shoulder to shoulder. Second and two with the steal oh, of 37. Oh. Penalty flag down. The ball goes to Leaks. He went straight ahead for first down yardage. It's nullified on an illegal motion penalty against the Colts. Leaks was too anxious to get the ball. So instead of second and two, it'll be second and seven. Go ahead. The ball will be moved back to the 42. That really does hurt, a very uncomfortable mistake. I haven't seen many games played without it. You know, even last week when we were playing, the offense, he got calls about three or four different times. And that really is concentration. Leaks is out of the ball game. Don McCauley goes in at second down seven at the uh, Steelers uh, 42. McCauley and Lydell are the setbacks. Dowdy wide right, car wide left. Chester on the right end of the line. Takeaway by Jones, a shallow drop, a quick pass to Lydell. Lydell is hit by one of those real good Steeler linebackers by the name of Jack Lambert and took him down at the 41-yard line. So the pass to a Lydell picked up a yard, and it's third down and six. I'll tell you, as they said before, and as I ad advertised, the Steelers got a, their, their defensive linebackers, they really do move around. Oh, man, you, you just can't run with them. I mean, the backs coming out of the back, they'll really nullify, I'm neutralize. Good. They are really excellent, particularly Lambert. He is one of the, he's just one of the, he's, he's in the, the mold of the old guys like Dick Butkus and Joe Schmidt, only he's bigger, stronger, and faster. All ready to take away by Jones, third and six, back to throw, has a little time. Takes, now runs into pressure, and is going to be pulled down in his own backfield, fighting for yardage. He's down at the goal, 45. Now well, we got a flag. And a penalty flag has been dropped. Jones was thrown in the cold 47-yard line. They spot the ball at the 45, now bring it to the 47, and the penalty flag has been dropped. Well, a field judge came up to holding against the Steelers' preliminary side. Field judge had come up to make the call, report to the officials, so this will be a first down, I think, for the Colts. Well, we got the brakes going our way now. Yeah. Take it to the 41, and now they will walk it off from there. It'll go down to about the 31 of the Steelers. They bring the ball down to the 36-yard line, and it'll be first down. Defensive holding, number 35, run, first down. First down on a holding penalty. Colt ball, first down, Steeler 36. Let's see if Jones just... 
try and back off a play action and try to hit Roger Carr deep. It's about time. Well, Carr has caught one for 17 yards and a TD so far today. Wide left, Dowdy the other way. High formation, leaks the front man. Fakes the handoff, rolls back deep to throw. Fires over the middle to Lydell Mitchell at the Steeler 30. And fumbled, and the Steelers' Andy Russell recovers at the 29. Lydell fumbled when taken down by one of the linebackers, and the other one, Russell, recovers. Jack Ham made the tackle. You have to almost say you can't run without the what? This is a good play. Now, wait a minute. They may have ruled the ball was whistled dead prior to the fumble. They do. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. I tell you, as a, as a rooter for the Colts, that's hard to believe. Well, it is a judgment call on the part of the official, and by golly, you can't, you know, I agree with what you've said, Vince, but that's the way he looked at it, so that's the way it's going to be. But, boy, but boy, oh, boy. I'll tell you, that's <laughs> one of the weird ones. You take him any way you can get him. At the 29-yard line, second down now. And about the four. High formation, the turn, the gift to Lydell off the right side as there's nothing there, and he's taken down at the 28-yard line. Joe Green down on the bottom of the pile. Donnie, see if Green doesn't line up offsides. They're so very, very close to him. Well, he, he does what he does. Vince. They put him inside between the guard and the center, and they try to, you know, uh, like to foul up the block and the offensive block. Sometimes he looks real good, and other times, you know, he gets manhandled. Yeah. Well, it'll be a third down and about two for the Colts. The ball resting near the Steeler 28-yard line as they come to a standard pro set. McCauley, Roosevelt leaks the running backs behind Jones. Kennedy and Chester, the tight ends. Waiting for the snap to uh, Jones. He gets it to uh, Leaks. Leaks through the middle. He's got the first down and then some to the Steeler 22-yard line. Mike Wagner made the tackle. And the Colts have a first down. This the is Steelers. good running. That linebacker actually overruns the defensive right end. Actually overruns the play. They had a game on. And he ran right by those the leaks. At the Steeler, 22 first down. Baltimore time, 6:04 remaining third quarter. Steelers leading by a count of 26 to 7. Split in the backfield. Nobody behind Jones. Quarterback takes it away without a fake. A deep drop sets up the throw. Fires toward the end zone. Roger Carr can't get to it. It's over his head. And we'll go to a second down and 10. Baltimore at the Steeler 22. The high pass not uh, brought on by the rush especially. Steeler defensive backs super coverage. They had two people playing Carr and they were with him as the ball went over. was overthrown. I'll tell you, that last play there, that pass rush, Vince, there was a lot of holding and grabbing and carrying on going on in there. I'm surprised the flag wasn't thrown in that one. Well, they dropped uh, number 63, Ernie Holmes, out of that defensive front four and add a defensive back shell. So they now come up with a down three to the Steelers on a second down. 10 Baltimore at the Pittsburgh 22. Split in the backfield, nobody behind Jones. Waiting for the takeaway, Jones, he yanks it away, wants to throw, gets pressure, tries to run out of it, and is taken down at the Steelers 33. It was Andy Russell, blitzing linebacker, who got to him along with the uh, defensive replacement, Donnie Shell, a safety man. And the Number 59, Jack Ham, he also caused that. He jumped up. Now you watch Ham coming in from the left side, you see? And now, now Jones can't see where to go. He almost loses the ball. Well, Tried old expression you've heard a zillion times. Now you know how Custer must have felt. Well, they were all over Jones back there. Where did they all come from? That's exactly well, right. That three he down, Custer. That, yeah, he did. That yeah. three down business is bothering them all year long. And they don't know who's blitzing. Third down and 20 uh, from the uh, Steeler 32. And the Colts are uh, hard pressed to do anything against this brilliant defensive unit of the Pittsburgh Steelers. This could be a blitz again. Takeaway by Jones, back to throw. Here they come again. Jones steps up. Oh, hold on, they got him again. Russell's got Jones down at the 40-yard line. And look at the coverage downfield. Nobody was nearly open. Vincent again. Oh, Jones, he near lost that ball. He just, he just popped out of his arm for a minute, and he's cooking up the pull back in again. 
Fourth down and 28 now for Baltimore. And David Lee is on the punt with 5.18 remaining of the Steelers. Just bringing it to the Colts. They just never let up. They keep coming, keep coming. Physically a very strong football team and a very well coached and a team that executes. Make very few mistakes. Punting formation and David Lee is on waiting downfield. It's going to be Theo Bell once again for Pittsburgh and we'll have David Lee waiting for the snap from Forest Blue. All ready to go. There's the snap. It's perfect. Here comes some pressure, and David Lee angles it to the ball. A penalty flag goes down. David Lee was hit. They ran into the kicker as Bell is slowed under with tacklers at about the 14-yard line. They ran into David Lee at midfield. Well, I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh's doing everything to lose the game now. There's another big break. They're not arguing, is they? unbelievable. Over him. They just kind of rolled into him. And like David Lee did a pretty good job then. Larry Brown is the guy who ran into the putter. So the Colts maintain possession. It'll be first down Baltimore at the 35 of the Steelers. What do you think Chuck Knowles thinking about right now? He looks very calm. You look at him on the sideline. He hasn't taken his hands out of his pockets. Wide left car, wide right Dowdy, Lydell and Roosevelt are the backs behind quarterback Jones. Waiting for the takeaway, Jones has got it a straight drop, deep drop, off the throw, runs out of pressure. Jones is going to be down at the 35-yard line of the Steelers. He dove down, it was uh, Ernie Holmes falling on top of him. So somebody, Jones got it back to the line of scrimmage. They don't stop third. blocking somebody. He's going to yeah. be punched up before the game's over. Tell you, they're running every. They're not running anybody out of the backfield. They have to keep them in the block, and the deep people are covered. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do unless somebody fakes the setup and then peels out of the backfield. He was trying to go really to Chester again. Chester was way down there, but Chester was co also covered. Yeah, but if nobody comes out of the backfield for the linebacker to pick up, they can go chase Chester. You're right. So he's not that open. Have variety. We've got another passing situation. Baltimore now with a second and ten at the Steelers 35. Waiting for Jones to take away. The Steelers may have jumped off. A penalty flag is thrown on a flare pass to Roosevelt. Leaks is poorly thrown. And we'll see whether the penalty flag is offside against Pittsburgh or whether they were drawn off. We'll know in a moment. Pittsburgh's right defensive end. Yeah. Oh. He was drawn off, really. Well, we'll know in a moment. It looks as though it might go against Baltimore, meaning illegal motion, and he was drawn offside. A false start, I believe, is what they call it. Here it is. Illegal motion. Up is declined. Third down. Third and ten. Illegal motion declined. Third down ten. Baltimore at the Steeler 35. Now, as we sit here this afternoon and watch the Colts and the Steelers, Vince, you get a bit of an idea how the Steelers were able to hang up the record they've hung up coming into this afternoon's ball game. Defensively, they're just plain overpowering, that's all. we will go to Chester now, Chuck. Okay, third down, ten. Chester split off the right end of the line. Jones takes it away. A deep drop sets up. Runs out of trouble. Now still running, looking, and uh, Joe Green chases him. Green dies, misses him, and uh, going out of bounds is Jones at about the 31-yard line of the Steelers. A very, very frustrating afternoon for young Burt Jones. He just has not had the chance to do anything at all. Jack Ham ran him out of bounds. Every time he looks up, there are three or four white-shirted uh, Steelers all over him. And the coverage downfield of the deep backfield of the Steelers has been almost flawless. He's going to go for the fourth down for the first down. Why not? That's right. right. Listen, you kidding? 350 left in the third quarter. They had the boss like a scrimmage. Put the ball on a 35-yard line and let the team run with it. They had many chances to get closer, but they haven't gotten there. That looked like it was a longest run for the line of scrimmage. It's from the 32-yard line. Uh, we've got about seven to go, fourth and seven. Jones fakes the handoff to McCauley. McCauley throws a good block to help him. Going for throw. Roger Carr can't get there. He had double coverage. Blount was with him, and uh, Edwards was with him. So the Colts get the ball over to the Steelers. Uh, at the Steelers, 32. Timeout of Baltimore with a score of the Steelers, 26, and the Colts, 7. They handled the football with the exception of one time in the first half. 
uh, for the first time this afternoon, the Colts stopped them the last time they handled the football. They had a series of three downs and worked the ball, or rather uh, three sequences, and worked the ball from their own 31, and then the Colts stopped them at the uh, Steeler 46, and they were forced to kick the ball away. Now the Steelers with Bradshaw go to work again. Harrison is in the ball game. Uh, uh, Franco Harris with bruised ribs is sitting it out. Waiting for the uh, takeaway by Bradshaw. Rolls back, wants to throw. Looks, fires to the back out of the backfield. Harris, Harris to the 40, 45, and up to midfield goes Harris. He runs Harris. Harris. Uh, Franco Harris. Reggie Harrison, a pretty good back from Cincinnati. A three-year veteran. And he picks up first down at the Steeler 49 yards. Vince, line. I have to say that I have to say really that this guy Bradshaw, I didn't think he was that good a quarterback, but he's picking him apart like a surgeon oh, now. He, he really is. And it is a difference. They're linebackers against the ability to right. cover the backs coming out of the backfield, and we haven't been able to do that. This, mm. All ready to go with the first down at the 49-yard line. Bradshaw turns, gives to Harrison. Harrison off the right side, and it runs through a couple of arm tackles and is finally pulled down at the Baltimore Colt 43-yard line. This is what you, uh, Chuck, you really call controlling the game now. Now they have to worry. They're worried about the pass, and now they, they open them up a little bit. And they, these guys, this offensive line of the Steelers, they show you a lot today. I don't know how good they've been all year. They've had to be pretty good to win nine in a row, though, huh? Second down and two at the Baltimore Colt 42 yard line. And again, it's Harrison and the uh, setbacks behind Bradshaw. The give to Harrison into the middle. He goes. Chayunsky stands him up at about the 40 yard line. But it's first down for the Steelers. Harrison has replaced uh, Franco Harris. Harris is out with bruised ribs. And Harrison has picked up a first down at Baltimore's 40 yard line. This makes it all a tougher now when they're running game going for the, if he decides to throw the ball, they got to look for the run first, and it really does slow down on your pass rush. Uh, frankly, Arthur, as we watch it, they develop this afternoon, it looks as though the Steelers honestly can do whatever they want to almost any time they want to. Bradshaw, play action fake, he's back to throw, sets up, fires, Lynn Swan with a great catch. Mm. Woo, 27 yards line of the Baltimore Colts. He is hurt, but he held on to the football. Mumford helped to put him down. Swan gets up and says, I'm all right. You don't catch the ball any better than that, Chuck. That's just a great, it's a great pass. It has to be. He put right in there. Who's the guy? Number 46 is the guy that made the tackle of Salter, but he looks like he's trying to get out of the way. Nah, he, he has hands like Belichikov. He At really. 27 and doesn't that fella have a pair of hands? Oh, my goodness. Steelers on a drive once again. First down to the Baltimore 27. Bradshaw uh, has them down and set the takeaway. He gives it to Harrison. Harrison off the left side. Shucks one tackler and falls inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. Hanging on was Jim Chayuski, who refused to be shaken off. Salter came up to help him out. The ball is resting to 24, a gain of three, second and seven. That was a best shot by our linebackers all day. Stan White knocked 33. Utah over the, the runner. A good duck. Well, Larry Brown goes out of the ball game as a tight end. Stallworth comes in, so they're playing a Lewis as a slot right. Lynn Swan outside him to the right, and Stallworth splits off on the left side. They split the backfield. Nobody behind Bradshaw on a second down and seven at the Colt 24. Bradshaw hands it to Harrison into the middle. He goes, and he is down to the 20-yard line. And the Colts were able to stand him up down there with fellas like Airman and Dutton. But they're doing it just to even time up now. It's exactly this is right. bad. We've got to get the ball back if we're going to do anything at all. Well, the, about the only thing the Colts have been able to do so far this afternoon against the Steelers, do something no other team did all year, score a touchdown against them in the first quarter. When it was a ball game, 9-7. That's right. And now the time is running out for the third period, and uh, Pittsburgh there goes. got a playoff. So we shut him out in the third period. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of the third quarter with our score. The Pittsburgh Steelers, 26, the Baltimore Colts, 7. Well, the fourth quarter about to get underway in Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. And it would appear that uh, the better part of this football game, uh, the first half of the first quarter clearly belonged to the Steelers. The second half of the first quarter belonged to the Colts, and everything else has belonged to Pittsburgh as they now have the ball at the Baltimore 20-yard line, third down and three, as we go to the final quarter this afternoon. Hey, Vince, Stan, uh, Stan White just come from talking with uh, Nasha Broder for the beginning of the fourth quarter. And I bet you Mark, Stan White said, what do you, what do you think, Ted? Take that Ted said, stop him. 
Well, the Steelers have uh, put on an awesome demonstration this afternoon. Slot right, Lewis. Uh, flank wide right is uh, Stallworth. The other way, or rather, Lynn Swan. And the other way is Stallworth to the left. Take away. The get goes to a Harrison off the left side. It's daylight to the 15. Dives between people of the 10-yard line. Goes Harrison, who is the replacement for Franco Harris. First down for the Steelers around the Baltimore Colt 11-yard line. That's what you say. Blowing them out of there. That's right. You know, they might be a little demoralized, too. The offense not even able to take advantage of many opportunities from around the 35-yard line. And now the defense figures, what the heck, uh, they can't score. What are we supposed to do? Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and Pittsburgh will quick kick. Well, the Steelers on the football from the same offensive set. Swan uh, split wide right, a slot inside him is Lewis. The other way this time, it uh, looks like Field Bell. Hold on a minute, it is. And now the takeaway by Bradshaw lobs it into the corner of the end zone, incomplete, Ooh. intended for Swan. And Mumford with him every step of the way was just uh, had better protection that time and was able to break up the play. It was not uh, Theo Bell on that far side, it was Ernie Pugh. It is second down and uh, 10 for the Steelers at the cold 11-yard line. That was just a lob, uh, just to put it in the corner. He was throwing to a target and uh, hoping that Swan could get to the ball before the defender Mumford. It didn't work that time. If the door to the dugout was open, Swan would have been in the dressing room. And probably could have caught it in the Where's runway, the too, the way he goes. <laughs> Same offensive set, Stallworth this time wide left. Slot right is uh, Lewis. Hold on a minute, they have a shift, and now the takeaway by Bradshaw. He's back to throw, a little bit of pressure. Throws down the gut, touchdown, Pittsburgh. Lynn Swan is there. We had a safety blitz on, and he threw it right where the safety man left. Just a great play. And then left it up to Mumford to cover that spot, and uh, Lloyd couldn't get over from the left corner. It was a delayed safety blitz, too. Salter See coming. you later. Yep. With 14-10 remaining, the uh, Steelers are just putting the icing on the cake. Uh, they have been able to do it in every department of football this afternoon, with the possible exception of kicking off. I got a good idea. They ought to let the clock just continually run. 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 What? Now waiting for the point after touchdown effort by Jurella. It's in the air, it looks all right, no penalty flags, and uh, Jarella really uncomfortable, gimping and limping off to the sideline. You can tell that that groin injury is bothering him as the Steelers now lead a 33 to seven. And they're just doing a thing on the Baltimore Colts. They have completely dominated. They have outplayed them in all departments. Well, if Pittsburgh is to go there, that'll be worth watching. All ready to go. Bobby Walden will kick off now for the uh, Steelers. He's their putter on the ball, and he hit it pretty good right down the throat. Howard Stevens to the 15, now the 20, to the 30. Jicks outside of the 30, on his feet, and spilled forward to about the 35-yard line. Colts go to work first and 10 at their own 35. The tackle credit to Benny Cunningham, a rookie from Clemson. You talk about a wide, a tight end with size. There's a guy that's 6'4", 255 pounds. What's his number, Chuck? He's 89. I didn't even see him. Oh, yeah, I see him now. <laughs> He's a rookie. He's a guy with the yellow pants on. <laughs> That's one of them. Well, Jones and his teammates are just completely frustrated with the defensive efforts of the Steelers all day. The Steelers have been just as good as everybody said they would be this afternoon. The takeaway by Jones rolls a little bit left, sets up, throws down the middle, caught by a Lydell Mitchell at the 42, three-yard line of the Colts and taken down there by middle linebacker Jack Lambert. This guy Lambert, he's and, all over the place. Uh, he, he is not only all over the place, but he hits like a ton. Hmm. I'll tell you, he does. How big is he? He's 6'4 and 220, and, and I notice he doesn't help people up the way some of them do after he knocks them down. He doesn't like anybody until the game's over, Vince. Well, that helping people up if you knock them down is for the birds anyhow. A lot, of guys, a lot, a lot of guys do it, huh? did he? Sure, it takes your energy away. That's right. Second down and two at the Colts, 43. And Jones uh, is going to have to just fill the air with footballs. Hands off to Lydell Mitchell. Cuts into the middle. He's stuck up at the Got 45. First down, though. He may have the first down. It looks as though he's just across the 45. And if he is, that'll be a first down. Vern Poller, the judge on the sideline, says he's got a first down. That's Earl, the story. Didn't he play with Gino, Beryl Toller in he college? He played with Gino, Matson, Joe Scudera. And a lot of those of those guys out there. They didn't have to go to school. All they had to do was show up for practice. I remember a remark that Arthur Donovan made one day as the bus went by that University of San Francisco. He's there as the spot where they retired Marchetti's grades. 
The pass is thrown off the hands of Raymond Chester at the Steeler 45-yard line. Second down coming for Baltimore at their own 45. Well, I know what a bitter disappointment this football game has been to so many uh, Baltimore Colt football fans. And, uh, you know, you look at the cold effort this afternoon, and I think if you talk to the players, as Vince will in the post-game show today, a lot of them are going to say that they just didn't play very well. But I have found down through the years, Vince, that a good team, a team as good as the Steelers, are going to make you look a lot worse than you really are. That would be the understatement of the year, Chuck. They, they really are. You know, the Steelers are just look as though they can do anything they want almost any time they want to. They're coming out like gangbusters. All ready to go with a second and ten. Jones yanks it away, wants to throw, sets up the finest receiver. A lot of time, fires down the middle. Dowdy has it, the 30 of the Steelers, and he's going to be taken down inside the 30-yard line. Oh, we got something going now. Bell Blunt made the stopping tackle, and Dowdy gets out of that mess of tacklers and comes up all right. First down at the Steelers, 29. 26 yards, the biggest play of the day. One of them. Once again, for those in the stadium who are tuned in on uh, transistor radios, the the, uh, the bad behavior that a few fans that will occasionally show in the stadium will not be tolerated at all in any manner, shape, or form. Throw caught by uh, Carr at the 11-yard line of the Steelers. Back there was the linebacker, Russell, helping Brown, and Carr made the catch at the 11-yard line for another first down. That was a great catch because he almost lost the handle on that one, Chuck. They come back in with the ball. 33-7, to seven, the Steelers. Colts first down at the uh, Steeler 11-yard line. They show an eye formation. Roosevelt leaks and Lydell Mitchell. Dowdy wide right, wide, or wide right, Carr Dowdy the other way. And uh, the Colts are uh, not ready to put it in play again. Whoops, contact is made as Jones pulls back the throw, but the penalty flag has been dropped. <laughs> to show you, <laughs> Dwight White went right up to Jones, stopped right in front of him, then reached out and went, and yanked the football out. I'll tell you, I think it's Jones is pulling these guys off sides because he got a little bit of a jerk. Well, let's see what the referee, Pat well, Haggerty, has to say. Illegal. Baltimore, illegal procedure, illegal motion. Jones jerks. We'll find out from Haggerty. Here it is. Well, all he says is offense. He doesn't define and uh, tell you who the uh, the person is. Well, Donnie, the quarterback in move his head. And he I guess so, Vince, but it looks like he's, he's moving his, body, his shoulders, too, you know? Now Steve Furness has come in now on that defensive line and going out to get a little bit of a breather is Dwight White. At the 16-yard uh, line, Jones drops the throw, looks to find a receiver, throws into the end zone, incomplete. Raymond Chester tried to make the catch in the end zone and didn't get to it. Jack Lambert is he's down there really protesting bitterly that Chester was guilty of interference. What's a little push among friends? I'll tell you one thing, uh, that fellow Lambert, uh, Arthur Donovan, would uh, fit into a few of the football oh, teams that you played with he's years a great ago. He's football player. He really is that. You see, look, he really did. He, he uh, watched it on an instant replay, he actually punched Lambert in the face. Did he? Yeah, he's still been called. Look at him, he's right, too. You tell him, Jack. Well, they come up with a second down. I don't down. say too much, you can throw it out again. That's still 15. Uh, Jones has a split backfield behind him to take away by Jones. Blitz. He's back to throw. He lobs it up in the air. Roger Carr can't get to it. And a, he was out of bounds. He took his hat and threw it off, and I guess Roger Carr was out of bounds. Brown wouldn't give him any territory to move in. You think that official has to use a comb to brush his hair? Watch that talk, Arthur. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. <laughs> Listen, I, he was out of bounds before he, uh, yeah. you know, you can't go out of bounds and come back in and make the play. And uh, White goes out of the ball game. Holmes goes out of the ball game. Here comes Lambert back in, and he brings with him linebacker Lawrence Hawes. Hey, Vince, is that a penalty if you go out of bounds and come back in and catch the ball? I think it is. Huh? Yeah. It'd be an unsportsmanlike conduct kind of a call. They even had a, a, a safety forward pass, wouldn't it? I don't know if there's a penalty. Oh, it's a penalty on it. There is. Yep. White, right, Dowdy. Roger Carr the other way. Some your boots, too. Third down, 15 at the Steelers' 16-yard line. Jones yanks it away, so here they come, he throws to Dowdy, Dowdy's got it at the five, penalty flag goes down as Dowdy goes inside the five-yard line, the man making the tackle, J.G. Thomas, let's see what the flag is all about, George Coon says it's against the Steelers. 
may have been against Chester. Uh, Chester violated. He was hit. Although they threw to Dowdy, there was a foul committed against Chester, I think. Oh, oh they were all over Dowdy. Defensive pass interference. Defense declined. Well, the defensive pass interference penalty declined. The Baltimore Colts. Hold on a minute. Yes, Jones first. says, wait a minute. We're not uh, declining a penalty. We accept the penalty because that'll give us a first down. Sure, it should give them a first down at the five. Right, because they need to go to the one-yard oh, line in order to get a first down. Give them a first down at the eight-yard line. That's right, at the eight-yard line. And Jones is in the game. First down. Pass on the Colts to the Steeler. Eight thirty-three to seven. The Steelers lead. Eleven twenty-seven remaining. Wide right, Dowdy, the other way, Carr, uh, Lydell Mitchell, and Roosevelt leaks in the split backfield behind Burt Jones. Burt not having one of his better days throwing the ball, gives it to Lydell, a sweep on the right end, Lydell to the five, to the one, and down he goes at that spot. Lydell did not get in. Jones has thrown the ball 24 times, completed 11. And they're going to spot Lydell down somewhere around the two-yard line. They bring it back in and spot it now at the one-yard line, okay? Second and goal from the one. And That's Lydell pretty good pursuit by number 30, tw uh, 23. Pretty good ball player, Mike Wagner, a safety mm -hmm. man from Western Illinois. He wrestles him down to the ground. Lydell Mitchell is out of the ball game. Roosevelt Leach and Don McCauley, the running back, second down and goal from the one-yard line. The turn to give to Leach, left side. Touchdown, Baltimore. Leach went over the left side for the score. Steelers now 33. Baltimore coming up on 14 if the point after is good. With 10.44 remaining. One thing you got to say, they haven't quit. No. You know, they're dead down, but they haven't quit. They've got to figure out some way of stopping that uh, offensive unit of the Steelers and getting that football back, something they have not been able to do effectively in the first half of the ball game. They did shut them out in the third quarter. The point after, penalty flag drop, kick is go, okay. And uh, let's see what the penalty flag is all about. The officials talk it over. It may have been offside on the Steelers' part on the point after. Offside, Pittsburgh declined Baltimore with 10.44 remaining in the fourth quarter. With the score, the Steelers 33, the Baltimore Colts 14. Timeout here in Baltimore, back in one minute. Well, the Colts have hung up their second touchdown on a drive covering 65 yards in 10 plays. And Lenhardt will kick off now from the 40-yard line. Down wonder how long it'll be before they have a gong that sounds when that clock runs out. You know, full on. <laughs> hey, can you imagine having a helmet on and hearing that gong? Oh, the power of foam. Behind is big old Cunningham, Benny, a rookie from Clemson. The fellow we talked about, Arthur, with that fantastic size. Six Great pair of hands, too. He threw it out like uh, Brooks Robinson. That is a tight end. He should it up. And uh, Linhart uh, did a good job masking that thing. He approached that ball at full speed and uh, then tried to hook it to the side, and Benny Cunningham grabbed it. Since he's been quite a surprise this year, Linhart. Huh? He had a great yeah. year. He really has had a great right. year. He's been a... One of the very best kickers in all of football. First down at midfield for the Steelers. The gift goes to Harrison. Harrison off the left side. Bounces off the tackle and gets trapped at about the Colt 48. Second down and eight now uh, for the Steelers. For WVOB in Blair, Maryland, and all of our network stations, we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Metro Media Baltimore Colts Football Network. Ed Seminini is madder than a wet hen, whatever that is. <laughs> Steelers, second down eight at the Baltimore 48. They've got Harrison and Fuqua as setbacks. Stallworth wide left, Swan wide right. Bradshaw quarterbacks without a fake. He a deep drop, ready to throw. Sets up, fires down the middle. Lynn Swan's got it, and down he goes. And the penalty flag has been dropped right along uh, in the offensive backfield, where usually you figure if you see a flag, it could be holding. He threw it at Mansfield, the center's feet. Oh, I guess he he was holding. Yeah, one of the officials in that Oakland New England ball game threw a penalty marker and hit a player right on the helmet with it yesterday. <laughs> well, 
telling you, the Sometimes Colts... Sometimes they have to get bigger, wider lenses. I guess so. The Colts have had the best of this. Huh? Holding uh, group in the 57. All, all the way, Vince. Oh, they've kept them in the ball game. Really, the Sam Davis, the guard. That's home. true. The Thank penalties you. against the Steelers have really helped keep the Colts in the ball game. Second down, 19 now. From the Steeler 42, they show an eye formation with Harrison, the front man in the eye, and Fuqua, the second man. They take away by Bradshaw. He flares it out to Fuqua. Fuqua is in the clear up to midfield. Fuqua down to the Baltimore 40, to the 35, to the Baltimore 30, to the Baltimore 32-yard line. 28-yard line goes Fuqua. You think that wasn't a great call? Anything I said about Bradshaw, no, I don't really take it back. But he is pretty smart. He's had a great day throwing the ball down. That's a the pass that has to be perfectly thrown. A back flaring out of the eye. And he had some great blocking going on down there, too, Vince. They really were loving the people. I wondered if they'd sit on it, and uh, you suggested earlier save something for Oakland next week, but they, they're using things they haven't used before. Jerry Mullins made a whale of a block cracking back there to save that play for uh, the Steelers. For the first down now, the ball resting at the Baltimore Colt 27-yard line. Bradshaw on the inside hand off to Fuqua, a sweep on the right side, cuts behind a good block. Fuqua's inside the 20 to the Baltimore, 18 or 19. Just a matter of the clock running out now, let me tell you. They're just, they're blowing them out of here. The words of the great amount of review banks, they say, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> but he never got hit. <laughs> <laughs> at the 16-yard line, the ball being spotted down, and it'll be a first down for the Steelers. Well, Washington beat us one time, and Weeb says, I'm embarrassed, and I'm going out the back way. And Big Daddy says, I'm not embarrassed, I'm going out the right way. <laughs> First down at the Baltimore 16. Bradshaw takes it away, gets it to Fuqua, tries the left side. It's open again. Inside the 10 goes Fuqua. And the Steelers, you mentioned a moment ago, the Colts, of course, have not quit. They don't know how to quit, and neither do the Steelers. They just keep right on coming after you. Stan White made the tackle. Ball resting at the 10-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. It's second down and four. 33 to 14. Now the uh, Steelers are leading the Baltimore Colts, and this late stage in the ball game, some of the spectators are getting a little bit uh, unhappy, and that will not be tolerated. Shouldn't be tolerated at any time. Ready to go. Bradshaw gives it to Harrison down the middle at the five to the four. He's in for the touchdown. Harrison scores right down the middle for the Steelers. That was just a delayed draw, uh, a trap up the middle, and it was just greatly executed. Mike Bonds gets blocked out of there real good. Like right, he's the only guy to touch them all the way up to. Oh, this guy came in late, but he just pushed him in for the touchdown. Well, the Colts this afternoon against the uh, Steelers uh, from the, what is it they say, Vince? The City of Bridges. City of Bridges. Uh, they are getting a, they're getting a thumping this afternoon. They're getting a lesson on how a championship football team can operate when it's got it in high gear. And the Steelers have had it in high gear from the moment they walked out of the field a few hours ago. They should have stayed on the Bridges instead of coming here. Mansfield is going to try the point after touchdown. He hits it, uh, looks pretty good. Mansfield scores. He kicks the point after touchdown. And it's now the Steelers 40 to uh, 14. Arthur? There's a break in the action. Let's pause now for this message. Well, with 7 minutes and 37 seconds left, the outcome uh, has not been in doubt for oh, quite a little while this afternoon. The Steelers now lead it by 40 to 14. Uh, they have uh, just done a magnificent job in all departments and have clearly been this afternoon, unquestionably this afternoon, the much better football team. Did you ever see such bad kicking? Well, listen, let me tell you, we, well, we've been kidding about it, but they better get something. They better get Jarella well for next week. They don't want to be doing this. Well, with a lead of 40 to 14, they're not going to, you know, use up Jarella. They're going to rest him and treat him and see if they can get him ready for Oakland. And I uh, got two words for Oakland next weekend. Watch Good out. luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Be ready. Amen, because I think this team is going to take them apart. I'll tell you, this is a great-looking football team. Uh, as a Baltimore broadcaster, you uh, naturally have to be kind of a Baltimore Colt fan. I am, and very proud of the fact that I am. 
But this afternoon, the, the Steelers have just handed it to the Baltimore Colts. They have been just a much, much better football team. We'll see an onside kick here. Who knows? Well, he might not be uh, deliberate, though. Look at this. He popped it up. Back goes Ron Lee. Ron oh. Lee takes it at the Baltimore 30, 35, now the 40, and is going to be taken down at the 45-yard line. Baltimore goes to work at that spot. First down at their own 45. I tell you, thank Tackle made by Lauren, Lauren Towns. Very good to show you going to be rolling over somewhere. Watching this kick going on. Remember the afternoon, the evening, uh, no, it was an afternoon game down in Dallas, Texas, when Mumble, Steve Meyer kicked off, and the wind hit it and blew it behind him. Everybody on our kickoff team started running down, and all of a sudden they all look up in the air, and there goes the ball behind them. Real? They all turn around. New voice. <laughs> well, here goes the double wing now, formation now from Baltimore, and the takeaway by Bird. He's got nothing to do but try to keep putting points up there. Throws to the Roosevelt Leaks, and Leaks is hit at the uh, Steelers 45 with a first down, and the penalty flag is dropped back around the 40-yard line. Jack Ham made the tackle for the uh, Steelers at the 45-yard line. Come on, stop throwing a flag so we can get out of here. Anybody want to volunteer for the locker room show? I'll tell you what, Vince, I, I don't think the locker room show will be that difficult today. Uh, down through the weeks, uh, this cult football team has proven that they are, that they've got a lot of class, that they've always uh, been good pros and very gracious uh, about appearing on post-game shows, uh, not only after victories, but after losses. And uh, I think you'll find them to be their gracious self again this afternoon. There goes two to stand Power. Second down and 20 now. Well, Chuck, I think it, it, does, uh, it does you good to build a relationship with some of these fellows to allow you to do that because uh, some members of the press from out of town asking the pointed questions, well, it's a little tougher there for them. But there's an old trite expression again, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, right? Amen, brother. Second down and 20 at the 35. Uh, Jones pulls it away, is back to throw, rolling left, penalty flag is down, throws it upfield for grabs and it goes out of bounds. There goes Bert. another flag. They were offsides. They were right defensive end yeah. before the ball was snapped. Well, I wonder. You look at a you look at a football game like this, uh, and uh, the Baltimore Colts have been just uh, manhandled by the Steelers this afternoon. They're losing at 40 to 14, and I think uh, Colts football fans begin to wonder now what changes uh, do the Colts have to make to be able to play on a level with teams like the Steelers. And that is a topic that you can discuss for quite some time. Going over all during the all season, Chuck. You're right. Watching who they draft, what they do. There goes some of the Steelers off. They look like they just come back from the Battle of Gettysburg, didn't they? Yep. Rocky Dwyer and some other fellas got a big... Oh, that's what... That's Frank O'Hara's, I thought. Frank O'Hara's is really ribs. Having trouble breathing. Jones is back to throw again. Here comes pressure. He ducks out of the pressure, and then they can't go anywhere. The Steelers are all over him. Looks like Ernie Holmes is there. And the Steelers just keep coming. You know, There's Chuck, everybody was there, and nobody got blocked. They still have the starting linebackers, Ham and Russell and Lambert, in the game, so he can't throw quick ones to the backs, which has been a problem all day long. I think that's been one of the biggest reasons the offense hasn't been able to to yeah. move it. And Vince, they're also, they're not worried about the run now. No. And they, they're just teeing off on it. Seven minutes left. This is fun time. Everybody grab a bone. They're oh, out boy. there to do it. And if the Colts were in the same position, well, we've seen them in They'd that position. They've gone the right out there thing. and done it. You bet. Jones uh, with back to throw once again to see if he's a can find anybody. Flares it to Don McCauley to the 40. Don McCauley goes out of bounds at the Baltimore 40. Maybe at the first down mark. Well, no, not quite. He's got He's got 11 yards to go for just a exactly, first down. Just exactly. Third down, about 11 now. The ball resting at the Baltimore Colt. Hold on a minute. The penalty flag play. has been dropped. Come oh, on. Offside Baltimore. Well. These guys have been watching too much movies. <laughs> well, I don't know, Arthur. I'm not in a position to say, but one thing I can tell you is that they certainly have not been able to come up with a good effort against the Steelers this afternoon. Whether that's due entirely to the Steelers or not, I'm not in a position to say. But they have not shown the kind of football they are capable of showing. Any more penalties will be end up in the end zone. Maybe everybody go away. Go home. A lot of folks are. <laughs> See the seats? <laughs> They're down long yardage for Baltimore. They've got second down and a half a day. Back to throw is Jones again. Plenty of time this time. Throws up the middle, and his Chester can't get to it at the 40-yard line. It'll be third down coming now. Well, it's just turned out into a route now. I don't think it's even... 
I can remember the time Vince when we were playing the 49ers in 58. We had to come out in the second half and, and score a lot, of, a lot of points. Well, John was moving the team, and he was on third down on the eight yard on uh, an eight to go, and he called the timeout to come over to Weave. And he says, what do you got for me, Weave? And he says, I don't know, John, what do you got? And John said, that's why I came over here. Give me something I can use. And we walked around a little, come back and said to John, get me a first down. John throws a, touch, a pass for a touchdown, and we turns around. Everybody thought he was a genius. <laughs> Here's that third down and still tremendous yardage. Yeah, Joe setting up around. the throw. Here comes the linebacker, Tall's knees got him. Toss downs him back at the 15-yard line. And it is fourth down and tremendous yardage for Baltimore back at their own 15. First, don't get a man. It's bad enough as it is. Well, the Steelers have come to Baltimore this afternoon and shown the Baltimore Colt football fans that the winning streak that carried them into the playoffs was not a fluke. They are just a son of a gun of a football team, and uh, they deserve to win this afternoon's ball game. They've outplayed the Colts in every way, manner, shape, and form. No doubt about it. With but one exception, and that's the punting game. And they haven't had the punt but what, once? No, twice. Here is David Lee waiting for the snap from center. He's got it okay. And David oh. just hit the daylights out of it. All the way back to the Steeler. 37 goes. Uh, Poe. Poe along the 40-yard line. Come now reverses his field. Eating up the clock is Poe. And he's going to be spun down at the 35-yard line. That's six minutes remaining. Got a long time to go. There's a timeout with the score. The Steelers 40 and the Baltimore Colts 14. On their own 35-yard line, and they've got a brand-new quarterback out there, Mike Kruzik, a kid who carried him when Bradshaw was not able to do so. He won the six games that he started. He was a son of a gun of a youngster, and he's now quarterbacking the Steelers. He turns, gets it off to Fuqua, tries the left side. He bolts straight ahead for almost five, about to the 40-yard line before the Colts take him down. He got a second down and about six. Kruzik uh, all ready to go. He takes it away, wants to throw the ball. He flares it out to Harrison. Harrison at the 40 is going to get taken down by Stan White and Bruce Laird. And there's little no gain on the play. Kruzik yanks it away without a fake, wants to throw. The young quarterback, a rookie, plenty of time, throws over the middle. It's caught by number 83, Theo Bell, at the Baltimore Colts, 47-yard line for a first down. Hey, Kruzik's going to pick you apart, too. You get all that time to throw the ball. First down, Steelers at the Baltimore Colt 47. Yeah, you think back again, and we have to do that. <clears throat> just the Steelers have just been clearly the much better football team, and uh, the Colts did manage to put together one drive, but it was just a uh, just meaningless because uh, Pittsburgh has been that good. Yeah. All ready to go, second down and nine. Kruzik uh, in a quarterback, takes it away without a fake, wants to throw, looks to find a receiver, throws over the middle. Reggie Harrison's got it to the 40-yard line of the Colts, to the 45, and then down to about the 30-yard line goes Harrison taking it. Maybe next time we'll play without any fans in the stands. Here's Drusek, pressure coming. Fred, he runs out of the pressure, looking for somebody to throw to, fires and hits Theo Bell. Bell is inside the Baltimore 20-yard line with another Steeler first down. That's a pretty good-looking kid, that uh, Mike Drusek, 6-foot, 196. Six-pounder from B.C. Boston College, via Virginia, or whatever that means. Or where he comes from, Virginia. First down, Steelers, the ball at the Colt 19. The Colts now, you know, in the longest two minutes of their career, their season, uh, waiting for that clock to run down. We've had some been... bad Sundays here. How about 1954 when we played the Rams, oh. and the first play was a, uh, was a sleeper. Yeah. You remember that? Sure. Yeah. Those three... Those teams. Well, with the score, the Steelers 40, the Colts 14. There's the two-minute warning. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Well, we'll go to the final two minutes. Uh, the Steelers will go to Oakland next Sunday, the day after Christmas, and we'll play the Oakland Raiders. And uh, I would doubt very much if Oakland has what it takes to stop this team if they play the way they have played this afternoon. And, yeah. I kind of think... Hey, Vince! Actually, somebody asked me what happened to the wheel at halftime. Are we supposed to be with the spoke on the field? Well, yeah. He may be suiting up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Drew Sakana, Drew Sack rather has him down and set inside the 20th, the 19th first down. Hey. Steelers. He's going to throw again. Throws right down the middle, and it's off the hands of the intended receiver, Ernie Powell. Second down and 10. Now the wheel has done a lot. We've had a lot of great characters like that. I remember the late Willie the Rooter. He was a terrific yeah. guy when you were playing. We How about Mr. Way. Gaddis, who's been around here oh, forever? Phil Gaddis, I love him. Yes, Give me a seat. That poor guy, you know, he's, he's like playing second team now yeah. to the wheel and the spoke. 
Oh, God, this is all on my section every week. Sure is. Section 7. I, I saw him, we saw him before the ball game today, didn't right. we? Yeah. Great God. He sure is. Well, the uh, Steelers now have a second down and 10 at the 19. Krusek back to throw once more. He throws over the middle, and it's caught, I think, by Harrison at about the 16-yard line, and Harrison is taken down by Darrell Luce. I'll tell you, they finally got to the quarterback, and Krusek got nailed. It's that third and seven. Well, the... Uh, There'll be no running on the field this afternoon. Uh, the Colts uh, here in Baltimore, uh, the conduct of our fans, I think has been exemplary uh, compared to the conduct of a lot of fans I've seen around the country. And, uh, I'm glad it's going to be that way, that people don't, uh, you know, behave in a, such an ill-mannered uh, fashion and race out on the field and do silly things. Uh, uh, it's just that uh, you just can't tolerate that. And they will not be allowed to do it this afternoon. Here's the give on the draw to oh Fuqua. My. Fuqua down to the 10, good to five. Hits uh, Mumford, I think it was, and took him down at about the three-yard line. No, it wasn't Mumford, excuse me. This that is, is just Brian Salter. insult to injury. That's all it's doing. Well, but maybe, you, maybe Pittsburgh better save these points because maybe in years to come, the things turn around. The history has a, has well, a way of turning things around. Yes. And so it just happened to them. Hey, well, they puts their second team players. Anybody want them to do, Johnny? Falls. That's exactly oh, right. Uh, they, they I'd like to have them run the clock out. <laughs> well, you know, well, the Colts have been handed a drubbing this afternoon. They will not soon forget. And uh, they've uh, learned that the championship caliber football is, uh, is a different brand of football. And the Steelers are very definitely a championship caliber team. The give goes to Fuqua to the left side, and he is uh, not uh, going to make it down to the 23-second mark and counting. I'll tell you right now, I'll take a long shot. If you want to pick a Super Bowl winner for 1977, I'll pick the Steelers. Now, there is a little class here, Donnie. They're That's letting right. the clock run out. Oh, yeah, they're letting the clock run out. They really are. They, I mean, they, they just came and they played great football, too. That they did. They really played great football, and they deserved to win this afternoon, and they, they did it in a championship fashion. They did it in a most convincing manner. That's the end of the game. The Steelers win it 40 to 14. Well, the hopes of the Baltimore Colts for a Super Bowl year this year in Baltimore were just rolled right off the cliff by a fantastic display of power football on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers who came to Baltimore this afternoon and proved once again that the way they wrapped up the season with nine straight victories, the way they threw in five shutouts was not a fluke. It wasn't accidental. It wasn't a weak schedule. It was the result of a very, very good football team doing their job the way they are capable of doing it. Uh, they scored uh, first this afternoon, three plays into the football game. They had a third and nine at their own 24. <laughs> Well, the hopes of the Baltimore Colts for a Super Bowl year this year in Baltimore were just rolled right off the cliff by a fantastic display of power football on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers who came to Baltimore this afternoon and proved once again that the way they wrapped up the season with nine straight victories, the way they threw in five shutouts was not a fluke. It wasn't accidental. It wasn't a weak schedule. It was the result of a very, very good football team doing their job the way they are capable of doing it. Uh, they scored uh, first this afternoon three plays into the football game. They had a third and nine at their own 24. Bradshaw cut loose a 76-yard bomb to Frank Lewis, and that had kind of set the tone of things to come as the Steelers overwhelmed the Colts, just blew them right out this afternoon. Bradshaw had a great day throwing for 264 yards, completing 13 of 18. Uh, Franco Harris ran for 132 yards before he left the game with bruised ribs. His replacement, Reggie Harrison, carried the ball 11 times for 43. Lewis only caught two balls all afternoon, but for a total of 103 yards and one of those a touchdown. You stack that against the performance of Burt Jones, 11 of 25 this afternoon for 144 yards. In the running department, Lydell Mitchell carried the ball 16 times, and the best he could get out of it was a total of 55 yards. It was the Steelers from the opening gun, and they are go to Oakland next Sunday afternoon to play the Oakland Raiders, and I think if you ask every Baltimore Colt fan who walks out of the stadium this afternoon to a man, they would tell you that the Oakland Raiders might be in a lot of trouble when they take on the Steelers next week. Through three touchdown passes, 76 yards to Frank Lewis, 30 and 11 yards to Lynn Swan. Reggie Harrison scored from a yard out and 10 yards away. Roy Jarella kicked two field goals of 45 and 25 yards. As the Steelers sadly beat the Colts 40 to 14, Franco Harris gained 132 yards on the ground. Frank Lewis caught two for 103 yards. Lynn Swan caught five for 71. And Terry Bradshaw only missed completing five passes. He was 13 of 18, good for 260. Four yards. Burt Jones' 17-yard TD pass to Roger Carr was Baltimore's only points in the first half, and Roosevelt Leak scored from a yard out in the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh led 26 to 7 at the half, and they beat Baltimore 40 to 14. Now next Sunday it's Pittsburgh in Oakland for the AFC Championship game. 
and Pittsburgh Steelers looked very convincing today in beating the Colts, and Baltimore was really never in the ball game after midway through the second period of play. Now, Burt Jones was 11 of 25 for 144 yards. The Colts on the ground gained a total of 71 yards. Lydell Mitchell, 55 yards, was the high man for the day on 16 carries. While the Pittsburgh Steelers gained a total of 228 yards on the ground, Franco Harris had 132 and 18 carries. And really, that ground game just kept Baltimore at uh, on at ease the whole game and really dominated the ball game. Terry Bradshaw had 264 yards, Kruzik had 44, 308 yards total in passing for Pittsburgh, 228 on the ground. That's a total of... 536 yards on offense for Pittsburgh and a total of 40 points. And when you consider the fact that Pittsburgh blew a touchdown when they fumbled on the two-yard line of the Colts and Roy Jarrell missed an extra point, it, the score could have easily been 48-14. to 14. So the final, though, was 40-14. to 14. So we'll be back with more on the WCBM scoreboard show in just one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tom Davis back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and a plane has just crashed into the upper deck. It's a private plane. It's a single-engine plane. Chuck Thompson has the binoculars on it. The plane has crashed into the upper deck around Section 1 or 41 behind home plate. The plane came inside the horseshoe of the stadium while we were out on the commercial, and the plane went into the upper deck as it tried to rise and get above the stadium. No. Luckily, there was no spectators around when it happened, it, and the, uh, there are some spectators up there trying to get the person out that was flying the plane. The plane crashed into the upper deck, and luckily, no fans were hurt. Now, evidently, the driver of the plane is hurt, and there are fans up there now trying to uh, free whoever was driving the they plane. They got him out, Tom. Uh, you know, is, before uh, he came in, I saw a guy come around once before, and I said to uh, Donald Bracey, I said, there's a guy buzzing the... Uh, Buzz in the uh, stadium, and here he came in again. Chuck, you want to put the mic on? You got the binoculars on there. Put... He went to the clothes den. That's when he crashed into it. I think he, before he was going to the office. You're right. That's where I saw him. Yeah. Chuck, put that other mic on if you want to real quick. And uh, You got the binoculars oh, up there. Right. I could not he believe it. While we were out for the commercial, we were just standing here waiting to come back on the air, and this plane came inside the stadium, and it's a single-engine plane, according to Chuck Thompson. Chuck, yeah. you got Chuck's mic up? I'm trying to see if there's any identifying marks on the airplane, but I can't see any at all. All the numbers are not available to me. It's uh, just got a blue stripe around the tail section and the manner in which it is sitting in the upper deck. Uh, we can't read the registration numbers in the plane. The pilot was carried out of the plane and is on his way now to the hospital, I would think. And the police did a very good job along with the other personnel of the stadium getting up there with a fire extinguisher. And uh, fortunately, there were no spectators in that area in the closed end of the grandstand or the horseshoe, or there had been many, many people hurt. Chuck, I couldn't believe it when the plane started to go up in the air. I it, said he'd never make it. Oh, it was unbelievable. It looked like there was no way it was going to go up, and then he just crashed into the almost where the, the seats that are chair back end and where the bench seats begin, say in section 41 or 40, right behind home plate in the baseball section in the upper deck, and it's roughly about 15 or 20 rows up where the oh, chair back seats he, end. He, 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 hit the stadium because if he had gone over he would have killed a lot of people out in the parking lot. Oh, that's right, Artie. Oh, my. It is unbelievable. Yeah. So what's happening to us, society? Are we getting that sick? Oh, boy. I mean, it's better. I better run out of gas, Artie. Yeah. I hope it's that. Well, oh. you know, uh, you have to do a heck of a bend to, to land in the, in the playing field. Oh, I can, uh, you, you know, the, the Somebody's going back in the, uh, in the plane again. To see if there's anybody else in there. Right. As far as we know, there was just the pilot, but somebody is going in there now to, uh, and apparently the, that was the only person in the airplane, Arthur, because they certainly would have made another effort to get uh, another person out if there had been anybody in there. Well, they got the only... Shock, right? It looked like he, he just well, didn't get that uh, altitude going. Well, it should have been no business for him to be inside his horseshoe. Yeah, absolutely to begin not. He broke every rule in the book in flying an airplane. And, uh, number one, he's not supposed to be at that kind of an altitude. And uh, uh, it was just, you know, very poor judgment on the so pilot's part. Plane come around? Yep. Yeah, they're bringing the stretcher, so uh, there's a nurse there, Chuck. So there may be somebody still in the There plane. might be another person. No, I think they're going to take it into the runway where the pilot is. All I can say, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most astonishing things I've ever seen in my entire life. A plane came into Memorial Stadium about three minutes ago, a single-engine plane. It tried to get up behind the horseshoe, could not, and it crashed into the upper deck. 
in the section 41 or 40, I'm not exactly sure, but it's right above the baseball press box in the upper deck. The plane now is nosedived into the stands with the, the tail portion standing straight up in the air. The gentleman who apparently was driving the plane or piloting the plane is out of the plane. The plane luckily did not get into any fire situation. Nothing really burst thanks into the plane. The, thanks to the personnel around yeah, the stadium here who knew the exactly what to do. People, Chuck. I know this reminds me of a way back in World War II, the kamikaze pilot. Well, that's, uh... That's what it looked like. Oh, I'm, I mean to tell you, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. It was almost like seeing a movie come to life. But, you, you know, people are now... Uh, the, the, the greatest blessing, if there is a blessing in such a tragedy, is the fact that the seats where he hit was, uh, were empty and no spectators have been involved, uh, other than for the man flying the airplane. Can you and, imagine, uh, Chuck, what would have happened if it would have happened, say, two minutes sooner? I mean, there were people still coming down there uh, uh, two minutes before that. I mean, it's just lucky. Luckily, look, they got uh, out of the binoculars, and you can see the... Uh, that's a, as uh, Ernie Tyler points out, supposing, uh, you know, the score had been the other way and the Baltimore Colts had won the ball game, how many people would have been in that area? There have been hundreds of people there, and... And it wouldn't have made any difference to the man flying the airplane. Obviously, his judgment was uh, just not what was needed to successfully operate an aircraft. And uh, unfortunately, he's paid a rather severe price for it. Chuck, I noticed as I put the binoculars on there, he knocked out about three rows on those chair back seats. And the first thing we did was to look to see, and uh, there are no spectators involved. Uh, just uh, the person, so far as we know, the only injury that came as a result of this unfortunate incident has been to the uh, person flying the airplane. Not too many people taking pictures here. No. Everybody's astounded. I mean, I think most of the people here in Baltimore that are still in the stadium are in shock. I would say it's less than maybe 2,000 people in the park right now. Yeah, yeah there are very, very few people. All in all, it's just been a very unfortunate day. Very few Baltimore people at the end of the game. No, 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 not like 10 minutes later. But I was watching, a, a, Bracey and I were watching a mounted police I, party, and I was saying, gee, what, you know, what a fine-looking group it is. And I saw the plane coming around. I said, you know, I think somebody's buzzing his field. I heard you say that, Arthur. Yeah. I never saw the plane. I heard it, but didn't see and it. And then the game, I said, here come the guy. Here he comes. Then I looked and saw it. You think you were like in the movies. Oh, it was unbelievable. All well, I can say is, I mean, it was just like a movie coming to life.